Hey, uh, good afternoon and evening to everyone. It's about 5.34. I'm going to do a little bit of extended coverage for us here to talk about the severe weather coming on in. Uh, we got a pair of tornado warnings now in Macoupin County. Now, these are technically outside of our immediate WCI3 viewing area, but we're going to watch them. We're going to keep a close eye on them. Uh, we've got some folks out there watching for us. My dad right now is an I west of I-55. He is actually uh, going to be here, kind of the Nilwood area, watching down here, Gerard, uh, and just south of there. And then we've got Seth over here heading towards Nicole and he'll be going west to look at this storm as well as uh, some of these storms now from south of Springfield all the way down to the St. Louis Metro severe and even tornado one there so certainly we'll watch are a few storms starting to develop as well to the north of them but I tend to think the warm front is kind of riding right along here and so that may limit the threat from getting much further north than 72. If that warm front though continues to chug along lift to the north then uh, we might see some more issues for Decatur and Champaign later as maybe some more storms can develop and then we do have some rain on the backside. Let's talk real quick here. I'm going to bring you into these tornado warned storms now. Earlier in Macoupin County we had a confirmed tornado. I'll show you a photo of that I got from a friend um, and I'll show you that. Now it is not confirmed but there is a second tornado warning with it as well. We've got one for north central Macoupin County from Carlinville North, and then we've, that's on Illinois 4. We've got another one from Carlinville South and West for the storm coming in uh, to the north and west of Shipman there. That'll be coming through between uh, Carlinville and Galipsy here. So both those storms to watch, super soft thunderstorms. And I'll tell you what, what's maybe been most impressive for me is that they've slowed down a bit. We thought they'd be moving at a good pace, you know, 30, 45 miles an hour. Instead, we're talking about a forward speed only of 20 miles an hour, which does a couple of things. One, it's a sign that this storm is anchored to the warm front. And when it's done that, uh, that means that the tornado potential is far from over with it. And two, uh, it's just a sign of strength. Sometimes the upper level winds can take these and blow them along and get them moving. But instead, we've got this storm that's just moving at a decent progression here. And uh, 20 mile an hour is it. So uh, a lot of good visuals, a lot of good eyes on that. Speaking of that, someone who's going to have eyes on that for us here in a little bit. Let me pull up this image and shot for you here. Uh, that's Seth. Seth is out there now, and uh, he is in the storm tracker. Seth, I, I need to get your, your audio on here real fast. Let me switch that to full screen, see if I've got this correct. I have to walk over here. Uh, you are in the storm tracker, and I think i got to route you real quick. So let me do that little housekeep behind the scenes, make sure I've got you set in the right spot. Uh, you're in TVU 10. There you are. I'll pull you on. Okay, Seth, we can hear you now. Tell us more about where you are, what you're seeing, and where you're heading. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. So I'm on Illinois uh, 16 right now. I am on my way towards Nicole. Uh, again, being far enough away from the storms, I'm not able to see too much at this point, but I'm hoping once I get in there to Nokomis and then maybe cuts to the uh, west just a little bit, I'll be able to see just a little more definition because, uh, yeah, these storms in Macoupin County are certainly the, uh, the ones to keep an eye out for because really anything north of those storms is kind of just some of that stratiform rain with maybe a little bit of activity in it. So we are interested in what's going on down there in Macoupin County right now. So that's kind of the grand plan is to, uh, once we're in Nokomis, try to cut west a little bit, see if this uh, storm is still kind of moving straight east, if it's got a little southern component to it, I'll kind of nudge north or south based on that. But uh, that is the game plan here. Hopefully we can kind of cut these things off as we get on into uh, parts of uh, Southern Christian and uh, Northern Montgomery County. So that's kind of what we're looking to do here soon. I'm thinking within the next uh, oh, 15 or minutes, so hopefully a better view of uh, what's to come. But until then, we are still on our way to Nokomis on Illinois 16. All right, thanks, Seth. We're going to keep your shot up for a second here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, did you notice any difference in the air mass between when you approached the warm front and uh, as you were continuing off to this the south and west there have you noticed a change in the atmosphere at all to some degree definitely um when we were out here earlier when i stopped at that uh place just south of assumption for a little bit it just kind of felt like you know a pleasant spring day it felt a little warm out there but you really couldn't feel too much humidity now that is starting to change it definitely feels a little bit more sticky out here so you can definitely tell the uh, environment has uh, definitely Okay, I think we've Correction. lost. Don't want to say this is as bad as it is. Keep going. Uh, don't want to say it's as bad as what it is uh, south. Yeah, no, no, you're fine. Uh, farther south, obviously, where that uh, warm front is a little deeper, things are probably worse. I think I'm probably somewhere uh, on the edge of that right now. But yes, I've definitely noticed at least to some degree uh, a little bit of environment as far as the humidity for sure. 
All right, Seth, thanks for that report. Um, we'll come back to you at some point here in the near future and check in with you. In the meantime, what I want to do real quick is uh, go ahead and show you a video I just got. This is from my dad. He's down there in the Nilwood area, and uh, he's got that storm rolling on through. So you see there a little bit of, an, of a wall cloud showing up, not looking like it's on the ground, both from radar and from spotter observations. So we've got eyes on the storm. This is the video again coming from my dad. And so we'll watch it, keep an eye on it as these storms move to the east. It seems like in the line of these storms that are severe right now is going to be Southern Christian, Shelby County, next in line. Uh, M Montgomery County is definitely next in line, and even towards Fayette and Effingham County. And uh, so we'll be watching all of that very closely, keeping an eye on things and uh, monitoring with how things play out. So uh, we'll keep checking back in. We've got some spotters out there. We've got eyes in the ground. And uh, just to let you know from a programming perspective, at 6 o'clock, we're going to go to uh, our digital uh, off of digital because we've got a newscast, but I have a feeling, let's say this warning here in Macoupin County is extended into Montgomery County. Then I will go wall to wall and back on digital and uh, into Christian County as well, based on the movement here. Uh, I think this will be bringing the Southern half of the County where that storm is. And it looks fairly organized still. What we're looking at here is a super South thunderstorm right now. It's just crossed Illinois four North of Carlinville between Carlinville and Millwood. This is the inflow, the inflow notch of the storm. We've got our hook echo right here. Your tornado would be located right in there, about two, three miles north of Carlinville. Uh, if you just saw something else happen, now we've got a confirmed tornado on the storm to the south of that. Uh, that's going to be south of Rockbridge. It's got a long ways to go moving off to the west. It's got to travel across the entire Macoupin County before then it gets to Litchfield and Hillsboro, and eventually off to the east from there. So both of these storms will have to watch, but that now, that second storm is a confirmed tornado as well uh, in Macoupin County. That's where we're at. We're going to take a look at the whole area for you real quick. Just kind of reset things because a lot of folks in digital. We're not on air. We're not on TV yet. We don't want to cut in if we don't have to. Um, but if we need to, we will. Look at this. Most of the area here, pretty clear. Springfield, Decatur, Champaign. Just some rain showers look like. Maybe a rumble of thunder there. Some rain to the north and west of the Illinois River. I tend to think we're probably going to keep that warm front for the most part along and south of 72. Uh, but we'll watch because the dew points have been rising. We've seen that warm front lifting a little more to the north with time, and that's going to determine where... Um, let me see here. Where we have the potential for both severe weather and uh, that tornado potential as well. So... Uh, just checking a few more bits of info. Uh, number of reports of a rotating wall cloud on the northern storm, and now a tornado confirmed with a southern storm. Let's look at the rotation. We can look at the velocity products here and kind of identify what's going on. Uh, first stop, if I look here from the St. Louis radar, the confirmed tornado earlier was north of Greenfield. You see those bright greens that are showing up there? That was that confirmed tornado that crossed in the northwestern Macoupin County. Since then, it has not looked as organized from this vantage point, but certainly there is some rotation there. Uh, another angle now shows where maybe that rotation is coming down 108 north and east of Carlinville. Not obvious to me, but certainly uh, is still there. And then I'll switch to the other one. We're kind of bouncing between radars here. This one's had a confirmed tornado with, and I, I haven't checked the info to see what's been spotted or, or how it's been reported. Uh, let me go ahead and pop it on here, and it'll give me a little bit of data information. Uh, that's going to be crossing 111, Illinois 111. It's an observed tornado. Which is what we've got uh, there um, near Fidelity, southwest of Chesterfield, heading to the east. This one probably going to stay just south of Carlinville. But uh, let me look at the National Weather Service chat real quick, kind of get an idea on what they're saying and what they're seeing with that. So, um, and there's another confirmed tornado down in the, looks like down towards uh, St. Louis. So we'll take a peek at that in a minute. Um, rotation north of Carlinville, one mile north of Carlinville, a rotating wall cloud is there. And then a confirmed tornado near Medora from a train spotter with the second storm. So that's going to be back here. There's Medora. So that might be wrapped up in here, kind of this backwards comma shape uh, where that second tornado has been confirmed by a spotter based on what they are seeing. Other storms down the line, you'll see there's another box. It's going to be the south side of the St. Louis Metro, a confirmed tornado now. Uh, it'll be coming in towards uh, the south St. Louis Metro and into Waterloo, Belleville, southeast part of the Illinois side there with a confirmed tornado warning also there. It'll be south of 44. Let's zoom on in and see if we can't spot anything with that either. Again, this is St. Louis Metro. I think that's going to be the, the potential debris signature that uh, has popped up there. And let me back it up just kind of see if i spot anything yeah there's been a little one there 
And uh, we'll see if the velocity corresponds with that spot. Yeah, right in here. So that's where your tornado is now near High Ridge, Missouri, heading off to the east. That's going to be a problem for places in Illinois eventually. Uh, Columbia, Illinois. Waterloo, Illinois. Belleville, Illinois. Places like that uh, potentially. It takes a little bit east. And it does seem like, too, in some aspects, these storms have started to kind of shift south a little bit. Not surprising. Typically, when you have rotating storms and they really strengthen, they'll start to deviate a little right from the normal direction. So you see that slight right turn with that. Another sign that these storms are certainly strong and uh, something worth monitoring. So uh, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Um, just get an update from the... Um, Getting an update, the National Weather Service does expect that this storm is going to continue into far southern Christian and Shelby counties. So that's something to keep an eye. If you know someone out that way, you might say, hey, time to uh, keep an eye on things. In fact, that new tornado warning has been extended into Montgomery County. So here's what we're going to do. Um, you know, at this point, I'm going to stay on digital. But by the time the 6 o'clock newscast comes along, this storm might be far enough east where I, I cut it on the TV. But I bet there's some folks in Morrisonville, uh, maybe in Parts of uh, Montgomery County having their alerts go off on their phones from these storms. It is just a tornado warning, uh, not a confirmed tornado, but still, just because it's not confirmed doesn't mean we haven't had them. This storm produced a pretty sizable tornado earlier in western Macoupin County and uh, still has the chance to do that. My guess is, based on its track, this probably stays south of Taylorville, probably more in Nokomis, south of uh, uh, the county line there, maybe towards Pena and eventually into Shelby County, where uh, Seth's at. Seth can hear me right now. Uh, Seth, we were hoping to keep you out from Pena and Shelbyville. You might be going down um, south of there. It's pretty wooded, pretty pretty hilly terrain down there. You may not have a good vantage point, uh, so we're going to watch that. Uh, let's just check in with you now. You're coming to a little town, so give me a second here to get Seth's graphics up. There he is, and uh, Seth, I'm going to turn to your audio. Hey, Seth, how you doing? He's waving to us. Let me get your mic on here for you. Um, you are coming into a town. Tell me where you're coming into, and uh, looks like there's some nice cumulus clouds ahead of you. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. I'm just rolling on into the middle of Nokomis right now. I'm hoping to uh, kind of cut it west here in a sec, but as you uh, mentioned, there is indeed a uh, train to my uh, west that is moving at a decent pace, so I don't think I'll have to stay behind it for long. I just saw the tail end of it before I came into town here, so probably not going to have to wait too long. I'll just kind of have to see. There's been quite a bit of lightning off here to my right, which is out there towards the west. Obviously, that's where the uh, storm is heading at this point. But uh, just going to kind of head west of town here. Not sure far. Not sure how far west they'll go just yet. Just kind of depends on where that uh, storm is at. But just kind of head that direction. See if I can kind of get a better view, uh, a little more definition, since things are a little bit uh, flat, at least looking straight at the storm here. So going to kind of work my way west onto this very road that I'm turning on right now. And uh, we'll kind of see what we can see <laughs> west of town. Hopefully we can get out of town soon enough here to kind of get some of the buildings and trees out of the way. But like I said, rest assured, the train is nearing its end. I saw the very tail end of it before I came into town. So we shouldn't uh, have too many problems with that here. Yeah, you know, Seth, uh, when you look at it, uh, I had a little experience with the train. There goes the end of the train. So you really get through there. Uh, that's kind of a worst nightmare for a storm chaser, isn't it? It, it really is. We had that a couple times when I went uh, on the chase last summer with U of I, and that's that's not fun. And sometimes they're told to to stop because of the storms too. So that's that's an even worse scenario. But thank goodness we caught this one at the tail end. Yeah, that's good. And and you're well away of it, not trying to outrun it. So we'll check back in with you and keep you updated on that. Uh, and I'll go ahead and mute your mic for you. And uh, that way we keep updated. It's 5:40, and I'm probably gonna give us another five minutes on the digital side. But I have a feeling come the six o'clock newscast, we'll probably start our extended coverage here with uh, severe weather, since we've got this uh, storm with a history of producing tornadoes heading into some of our core viewing area right now. Uh, currently, the tornado warnings in effect for Montgomery and Macoupin counties, and uh, that's for two different storms. Both of them at one point have had confirmed tornadoes. That is not the case right now. Uh, it seems like perhaps the northern storm still has some potential for it as it gets closer to I-55. Sangamon County, I think you're going to be fine from this. I'm not too concerned about that. Really, for me, the concern here is going to be for the southern part of Christian County, Shelby County, Fayette and Effingham County, if this continues, that warm front is sitting right in here. And that storm is able to ride that warm front and uh, cause some problems for us. And uh, so that's certainly going to be the case. And uh, so far, there are four different storms with tornado warnings out there from south of Springfield all the way to the St. Louis metro. looks like now uh, the northeast side of St. Louis, that might be in the Illinois side of the river. Tornado warning there. going to include Edwardsville, Southern Illinois University campus. 
include Granite City, Collinsville. It's going to be the 270 up towards uh, 70 and 55 there west of Highland. That's going to be Madison County, Illinois. And then um, we haven't seen an extension of that other tornado warning into the Waterloo area, Monroe County, but that certainly might not be far away from us as we, we keep an eye on that. So I think that's going to be Madison. And let me just pop up my, my info here. Just to confirm, well, hey, there you go. There's the new one. So now it's uh, Monroe, St. Clair, Madison County. It's all with tornado warnings down there in the St. Louis metro as a line of severe thunderstorms with uh, confirmed tornadoes at times continues to push on through. Okay, let's talk about this northern storm. This one for the WCIA3 viewing area does have the greatest concern for me um, as it is the closest to us. Technically, McCoop and Montgomery County are in the St. Louis television market. Um, we have some followers. we got lots of friends down there, McCoop and Montgomery County. Uh, so on the TV side, we don't give it as much coverage as we can on digital, uh, but that's certainly something that we'll continue to watch as we see now northeast of Carlinville. To me, the Signs of rotation increasing on that storm a little bit more here. Uh, maybe organizing. There might be another tornado that tries to develop here before long. And so maybe by 6 o'clock, if that changes, we'll jump on TV. Keep our folks in Christian County down the line a, a little more aware of that. And uh, then, of course, uh, that other storm there by Medora kind of switching through radar sites. That one, there's some rotation in there. Not a whole lot, but certainly is uh, worth monitoring, worth keeping an eye on as we are... Um, watching things here. And the other thing that we have to watch also is while our northern storm is more supercellular, an isolated cell that's able to withstand itself, when we see starting this broken line kind of in here, little kinks in the line, um, that line of storms there, when it gets a little kinky like that, basically you can get areas of rotation in there. And uh, that area of rotation is uh, enough to cause problems. That may very well downstream be a concern say Southern Christian, Shelby County, Montgomery County, obviously seeing the threat now, Fayette County, Effingham County. And if you draw a straight line there, maybe to Coles and Cumberland County as well, if things progress and the time goes on. Um, it looks like we did just get a severe thunderstorm warning for Christian County as well. Let me check some details on that. I think this warning is primarily for the hail concern from these storms. That's something else. We've had some reports of golf ball size hail, and uh, they're going to issue that for some ping pong ball size hail in Christian County. They think, and I tend to agree, maybe this rotation is able to stay just south of the county line. But you know, we're splitting hairs here, and that rotation is still a good 15 miles west of the Christian County line. So there's some time to watch this as it's only moving about 20, 25 mile an hour uh, before any extension of the warning would be issued. But certainly in Christian County right now, uh, there's some folks there probably getting uh, no weather radio going off. Perhaps uh, their, their, their uh, weather app is notifying them in Christian County about that severe thunderstorm warning. Another way that you can get a notification is through weather call. And if you haven't heard of this service, first off, if you have a cell phone, you've got a weather app. That weather app will follow you and issue or give you alerts when there's warnings. You can scan that code there, or if you're watching on the phone, I'll add a little code as well on signing up. Um, that allows you to get weather warnings for a specific location. And this primarily is a service. It is $12 a year, but just $12 a year. Um, you think of a NOAA weather radio, you're going to buy it for $39.95 plus tax. So you get four years of this for the price of a weather radio. And sometimes with weather radios, something happens and they don't last three, four years or whatnot. Uh, so it's a great service for a landline or a specific location. Um, somebody who maybe isn't as um, you know, savvy on social media, maybe they aren't as savvy on uh, um, Facebook or they don't like apps. They just want the good old fashioned landline. This might be a great option for them here. Uh, if you've got, a, a, really we're thinking of our, our, our senior citizens, our, our elderly folk, our, our communities as well. School districts, a school building can sign up for this for 12 bucks. You could uh, sign up for that uh, app there and uh, uh, notify, you put in your location. The nice thing as well is that it will follow. You can program it to a new location temporarily, which is for folks who like to go in RVs, or maybe you like to go um, out uh, for a weekend hotel experience. If there's a chance for storms, you can reset that location for the long weekend or for three days, and uh, it'll follow you with that. So it's a great service that we have as well that we've offered. And, and um, we think it's valuable for folks who might be uh, interested in that kind of thing. So with that, um, just checking some new data here with our tornado warnings now. Uh, what we're going to do, and just for production behind the scenes knows this, I'm going to end up going full screen. And that way you guys can move cameras um, around and get ready for the show. Do you need to move cameras at all? 
You need to move some cameras? Okay, so, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get off and uh, we'll keep the stream up. I will keep the radar up, uh, probably stream the newscast because I have a feeling that we're going to come back in anyways. Uh, so that's kind of what we'll do here as we're about five minutes from that newscast. So uh, just what we'll do is uh, flip that on for you and we'll see if we can get, let's see, that's Seth and his thing. Put my switcher on here. There we go. I'm going to switch from Seth, switch to our radar imagery real quick. And uh, we'll leave that running for you guys. So we're clear on cameras now. Um, just kind of leave that up for a little bit. Uh, but certainly at some point here in the next little bit, things might start to get a little bit more active. Got a lot of you watching. Again, our newscast starts at 58, 57, something like that. Uh, so Seth, uh, if you're out there too, I, know you've, I can tell you've stopped. Every once in a while, Seth, just for the back too, on his camera shot. Just move that camera around so they can see some movement. Let's change a little bit. Uh, that helps them in the back. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Okay. So... Um, with that, they're taking care of some things behind the scenes, and uh, we're going to watch. Got the tornado warnings for McCoop and Montgomery County, severe thunderstorm warning not for Christian County. We are seeing a few storms try and develop there west of Jacksonville. I tend to think they're north of the warm front. Maybe some chance for hail and gusty winds. Uh, we'll watch that to keep an eye on things, but uh, certainly we do have uh, our eye on how things might evolve. Uh, so that's kind of what we'll be keeping an eye on here. So, um, It is 5.56 right now. And uh, so you're going to kind of hear me talk a little bit. So we got the radar full screen. I'm going to switch some graphics. And I'm just going to stream the newscast. Um, so production in the back here is because I have a feeling we're going to probably start to do some cut-ins at some point and stick with things since we've got warnings knocking up on doorstep. So I've got the Max 2 full there. I need to put production switcher in here, taking care of a few things behind the scenes. Getting a report. Um, we will watch that. And that's on 7. So when the newscast hits, I'm uh, getting a message from my dad out there. And uh, he is on 55 there near Raymond. And let's see. That's going to be a new tornado warning for southern Montgomery County. Man, they're just issuing warnings left and right on these storms here. Uh, we do have to watch the storms a little further to the west as well. So we'll keep an eye on that. Anybody have any uh, time queue? How far are we out from show? Two minutes out? Okay, so we're about two minutes out. Um, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna leave our digital stream up because we got a nice 1,100 folks on there. I'm sure there's some folks interested. I don't have any tornado warnings for the core area, but I will stream the newscast so that way you guys are watching. Um, and, and at some point, I have a feeling we're probably gonna start to to uh, roll in full coverage here with uh, these storms as they continue out there. It's pretty amazing to see lined up what we got. One, two, three, four, five tornadic worn storms down there. Quick check. First check further to the west. Uh, not much happening. So that storm's going to be south of Auburn and Pawnee at this point, which we'll, we'll keep an eye on things. All right, you're going to see this, the screen flip here for a second. It might flip black. Then uh, we'll set up for our newscasts. So stay tuned. This is your WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by Route 66 Solar. Outside, we've got some severe weather moving through the area. That crawl in the bottom of your screen has been busy with some severe thunderstorm warnings now in Christian County and some tornado warnings to the south and west of that. 
Um, there's going to be, uh, I think we're at uh, six tornado worn storms now from McCoop and Montgomery County off to the southwest into the St. Louis metro. I'm not taking over TV yet. We're going to keep the newscast at six rolling along, but if needed, as these storms get closer to Christian County, then we may start to do some TV time as well. Of course, we've got the stream up as well. Folks are online watching that. Tornado now, uh, possible tornado to the west of Raymond moving to the east. We've got my dad down here, Seth's down there, some other spotters in the area keeping an eye on things with more warnings down the line. Some of us get that chance for severe weather here over the next few hours. Others of us may have to wait a little bit. We'll talk about the storm chance tonight, who's in, who's out. What we expect as we go after tonight's storms into the weekend and more. All of that coming up as WCIA 3 News at 6 starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Always kind of a breakfast destination for a lot of people, but other than that, a lot of local people ate there. A long-standing Central Illinois restaurant and community favorite for breakfast through dinner has been torn down. Good evening, I'm Brendan Morano. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Muhammad's Hen House was a village staple for about 50 years. Now people are wondering what lies ahead for the property. WCI3's Will Simmons is with us. So what are the plans for the empty lot? Yeah, Jennifer, developers say some commercial establishments will be coming soon. Still, people will miss the iconic red barn that was the house hen. The hen house had stood for five decades, welcoming people who entered Muhammad from Interstate 74 with its red barn architecture. My dad had a table there that he used in his office. So there was a phone plug in. He would grab his telephone from behind the cash register. Now, people are remembering the building after being torn down to make way for something new. Russ Taylor's family has been around the village for 100 years and once owned the property. There's a city dump in that area, so it's come a long way. Then it was a, a softball field, and when the interstate came through in the mid-60s, why it's continued to, to develop. People have fond memories of the homestyle restaurant serving classic diner fare. Jenny Gibson came to watch the demolition, and members of her family worked there. She was a waitress, he was a cook. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of memories that over the, well, 45 years I've lived in Muhammad. There was a table with a sign overhead that read Table of Truth, where older men would meet over coffee. Although Emily Croner, who owns a bakery across the street, knew it as another name. There was a table there called the Liar's Table, where always a bunch of men would sit around, and it was always a funny thing. Eastwood Commercial LLC owns the property. They say a new commercial development will break ground at the site in June. And now where we've got over 10,000 people, there's just a place for uh, more commercial growth because of the people that are here. People were sad to see the hen house go, but most remain optimistic about what changes lie ahead. I mean, I have hope for the future, and there's Muhammad's just growing by leaps and bounds in all directions. Developers say two businesses have been confirmed for the new site, a national brand and a regional store. They say two more shops will be added to the lineup soon. Brandon, back to you. All right, Will, thank you. Today in Champaign, the fire department started taking proactive measures, helping to make sure emergencies don't happen to begin with. Part of that starts with checking and installing smoke alarms. Firefighters went door to door in one Champaign neighborhood after flames destroyed a mobile home there earlier this week. The deputy fire marshal says working detectors can cut your chances of dying in a fire by half. In Champaign, these installations are proving to be a big help. And that's an important statistic that we've been tracking in Champaign because since we started our smoke alarm program three years ago, we've actually reduced the number of fire fatalities by 75%. And from our historic high of building fires in 2022 of 66, which is a lot for a city our size, we've knocked that down by 30%. So these are good trends for us. So what do you do if you need a smoke detector installed in your home or maybe need the batteries checked? We asked the department and have the answer tonight at 10. The Georgetown Ridge Farm School District is taking security to the next level with the help of artificial intelligence. WCI3's Jack Crum shows us how. It's just another layer of uh, security that we're, we're happy to put in place. Georgetown Ridge Farm School District is on the cutting edge. Superintendent Gene Neal says the addition of AI only furthers the school's security. A few years ago, we installed a very nice camera system. Uh, last month, we, uh, the Board of Education actually hired a school resource officer. So that's another layer. And then this final layer is going to be installing Zero Eyes. The Zero Eyes AI software will be installed directly into the school's security cameras. 
The technology informs its 24-7 operations center of any weapons it sees on school grounds. If the center finds a valid threat, they dispatch alerts and intelligence to local law enforcement and school staff in a matter of seconds. It is a, uh, a necessary tool. Brad Russell is the high school's athletic director and history teacher. He says that extra protection will be helpful for crowd-heavy situations like sporting events. We're having people come in and out without any type of orderly fashion like we do during the school day with the locked doors and you're, you're having to push to get in um, and you're having to be identified. And so this is just another, another level of, of security. A solution to catch bad situations before possible tragedy. We are just feeling really good about this another this extra layer of protection and safety for our staff and our students. Reporting in Georgetown, Jack Crum, WCI3, your local news leader. The school board approved the district's five-year contract with Zero Eyes AI earlier this month. They'll start installing the summer to be ready for the fall. Illinois race weekend is just a week away. How many volunteers are needed? Plus, the world's largest insect innovation center in the U.S. is now open in central Illinois. Find out if you will be eating what's made there. Ooh, and uh, we have some, <laughs> <laughs> we have some severe weather. Yeah, from bugs to the weather bug that's been scrolling all evening here, right? Uh, so far, most of the tornado activity has been just outside of our area, but not much here. We'll talk more about uh, some tornado warnings in McCoupin and Montgomery County. Now a severe thunderstorm warning in Christian County. Where are these storms heading? What do we have to watch for? And more, I'll have a look at your weather after this. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. It is 6.08 right now. Uh, got a bit of activity going on out there with some active weather. So uh, we're going to keep things uh, pretty much focused on that with the number of tornado warnings that we have in the area that are ongoing here at this time. Let's uh, take a look in at what's going on here and uh, show you things. First off, this is a look at McCoupin Montgomery County focus centered here. There's Springfield. Champaign's way up here. We'll talk about area wide here coming up in a second. Um, and what we notice is these red boxes, even a couple of these pink boxes are tornado warnings here. One of them now is uh, on I-55 in Montgomery County moving off to the east. And so that's something that we'll keep an eye on and be watching pretty closely here. There is for the northern side of that storm, a severe thunderstorm warning in southwestern Christian County. That is because 
of uh, what we're dealing with here. So if we could, let's tighten that camera shot a little bit and so we can focus more in on it. Uh, the rotation may stay just south of Christian County. I know some folks here are probably watching in uh, Taylorville, a little bit nervous after what's happened, um, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And if we can, I'd like to be on camera for this, and I'd like that shot just a little tighter here. Uh, that way we can uh, focus on some things. Um, I want to be able to point some things out with what's going on. And so that certainly is what's on the table. Um, so if we can tighten, there we go. Thank you very much. Um, if we can here, we've got that rotation there. It's down by Raymond to the south there. Down there, we've got my dad. He's been reporting a wall cloud. We've also got Seth over here in Nokomis. I'm going to come to Seth here in just a second. As we go further down the line, though, more tornado warnings into Macoupin County here, south of Carlinville, and then down I-55 all the way into the St. Louis metro, Madison County, St. Clair County, Monroe County. A couple of confirmed tornadoes actually down there as well, moving across I-55. A lot of this activity lining up to head to the east. So at this point, places I think might be a problem for that, going to be Christian County, Shelby County, Effingham County, maybe towards Coles and Cumberland County if this continues. What about further off here to the north and west? There is some rain out here, a couple of developing storms. They seem to be north of the warm front, though. Uh, that north component of the warm front probably means that we don't have to worry a whole lot about tornado potential, but there could be some hail potential with that as well. Uh, that's something that we're going to watch. Where the storms are now does have that risk for severe weather up to a level three, and that's where the bullseye has been. The question is, how far north can this warm front lift? And it has certainly been moving to the north. And so that's something that we'll continue to watch uh, as we move over the next little bit. Helping us keep an eye on the sky, we've got Seth out there. Seth is in the storm tracker. And uh, I think we've got him. I'll pull him up here for us. Uh, he should be in the Nokomis area. There you are, Seth. Uh, Seth, can you tell us a little bit about what you're seeing, where you are, and uh, how things look? Yeah, sure can, Jacob. Um, funny enough, I'm just to the west of Nokomis. I had been kind of comfortable here for about the last 15 minutes. And then I saw lightning and heard thunder about uh, three seconds later. So I know there is some lightning directly overhead. Um, the storm is just off to my left here. I'll try to get it uh, positioned as best I can. I'll probably flip to the rear camera here in just a moment. The problem with this storm that I'm looking at is that it looks like that rotation that we've been following, it looks awfully rain wrapped. So I don't know how good of a view I'm actually going to be able to end up getting out of this. I'd like to not uh, be completely in that rain wrapped area in case there is something going on there. Just want to kind of keep my distance. I'm kind of tracking back to Nokomis just a little bit here just because of that lightning bolt kind of just scare me off to the east here a little bit. I'm still about 15 miles, I checked in my app, away from that center rotation. There's just so much rain packed into that, so much red on the radar. And I'm only about as close as I want to get to that as far as that's concerned. So I'm tracking back east into Nokomis. I'll probably just kind of watch things from outside of town there, maybe find another field to kind of dive over into. But uh, that's where we're at right now, just outside of Nokomis, heading back into town, kind of watching the storm from behind there. Uh, on our way into Nokomis, we are all just Seth Bonoff in the Storm Tracker. Jacob, we'll send it back to you. Seth, uh, thank you so much for that here. Uh, we real quick want to run through future track. Where are these storms heading? What do we expect? First off, it has been showing storms a little further north. That's not been the case so far, which has been good for folks along I-72. But in general, we see the timing of that line continuing off to the east. That went a little quick there. About the next uh, 30 minutes or so, we'll see this starting to cross I-55, and we think by 7 o'clock, it's probably going to approach the I-57 corridor, and uh, we could be done by 8, 9 o'clock, so that's something good that we'll be keeping an eye on. We're going to watch those warnings down to the south. Let's get you your seven-day forecast real quick. What happens when all of these storms go away? Lots of nice weather on tap here. Friday looking cooler, 58 for a high, a few clouds here and there, uh, probably more clouds into the afternoon than the morning, lots of sunshine for the weekend. Uh, overall, pretty nice. With some cooler temperatures, you might have to watch for some frost, though, by the end of the weekend. All right, Jacob, thank you. Illinois baseball is off to a strong starting conference play. What's different between this and last season? And U of I's unofficial mascot, the Kingfisher, has popped up over campus. How the bird is trying to get the attention of the university.
We got some severe weather to talk about now here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just take wall to wall from this point on with these tornado warnings now being extended up to our viewing area and off to the east. And I think this might be a chance for some uh, time where we'll be talking for a while about the weather here with these tornado warnings now in place. Uh, this newest tornado warning has been issued for Montgomery County and extends all along the southern Christian County line, also into western Shelby County right up there along 51. And as this is approaching our area, starting to sit speed up a little bit. So we think it's time now to spend some time with you and talk through these storms as for some of us likely to be a rough night. Others of us though, based on how things have been trending, probably going to scrape through without many bumps and bruises. So that's some good news for us here. Currently now we have a, a number of tornado warned storms. In fact, look at all these red boxes here. That's a huge red box all the way into Southern Illinois uh, from I-64 through I-70 and north of that there. Montgomery County tornado warning, southeastern Macoupin County tornado warning, including earlier a couple of confirmed tornadoes, one in northwestern Macoupin County, one there uh, in the south part of Macoupin County, another in Madison County. We had others in St. Louis area. I'm starting to lose track of how many actual tornadoes this line has produced. Now, as this continues to push off to the east, we're starting to grow concern now for uh, Shelby County, Effingham County, eventually far southern Christian County with these lines of storms here. The speed's starting to pick up more of a forward motion at this point at about 40 miles an hour. And uh, so with that, these will be moving along and moving off to the east pretty quickly here. Just going to be checking a lot of information. Uh, I know we've got Seth is out there on this storm. What I want to do is I want to talk about Christian County first off here. I know some folks in Taylorville, a little nervous. There's probably some lightning and some rain coming your way. The tornado threat is well south of you. It's going to be south on uh, from Pena and to Nokomis, and that's going to be uh, right along. Uh, let's see here. It's going to be right along uh, Illinois 16, where we have to watch for that threat. And as this continues off to the east, that concern is going to be there maybe for Pena, Oconee, and towards Cowden. And so we want to spend a little extra long time talking about this uh, with those storms. One thing we have noticed is that these storms are not looking as isolated. They're looking more, more linear, more like a squall. And what that allows to happen is we get that line coming through. Uh, it's going to, one, speed up the forward motion. So finally seeing that, number two, we'll start to see some areas of rotation potentially embedded in those storms at times. And uh, that's exactly what we're seeing here. It looks like a messy blob on the radar, just colors here and there. Someone splattered some paint on radar. If we look at velocity, though. The velocity is going to allow us to look in and see more of what's going on here. And we've seen numerous areas of rotation in these warnings. In fact, the National Weather Service has made the, the decision to warn the whole county. They say all of Montgomery County, You've got a tornado warning here because of this. This rotation now here is near Raymond. It's about two miles southwest, a little spot there. There's been other spots popping up as well. Um, other spots popping up as well here to the south of Raymond towards Litchfield. And uh, this storm is continuing off to the east now, getting close to Raymond as we move in that general direction to the east. Uh, we've got Seth out there, I think. And if we can... I'd like to check in with Seth, so maybe we can pop him up in preview, and uh, that way we know he's there. And uh, there he is. There's Seth out there in the storm tracker. He's uh, looks like Seth. Maybe you're in Nakoma still. Tell us where you are, what you're seeing. Yeah, that's right, Jacob. Still here in Nokomis, and I'm not exactly 100% sure where the sirens are at here in town, but I thought I briefly heard some pretty high-pitched noises in here, so it sure sounded like there was a, a tornado siren there for just a moment. Obviously, we are in that tornado-warned area. I'm tracking a little bit to the east. I've noticed this thing is starting to cut right just a little bit, so I want to make it a little farther east before I make the decision to go south again just because it's starting to move a lot faster to the east. So right now I'm just kind of making my way over to, uh, I think I'm gonna make my way over to Oconee over there and just kind of see if I can make my way south from there. But this, this storm has become awfully complicated, Jacob. Lots of rain now developing out in front of it. And it's just really difficult to get a good view of anything here at the moment with all this rain kind of sitting overhead. Yeah, uh, Seth, uh, as you're out there, tell me a little bit more about uh, how the air feels. Is there a change in the air mastery? Are you feeling that humidity with that warm front coming through? Yeah, definitely did earlier. Kind of stuck my hand out once I was in that uh, field earlier watching uh, towards the uh, towards the tail end of our uh, stream there and during my uh, hit earlier a second ago. It, it's definitely a, a lot denser feeling than what it was uh, earlier. Definitely kind of just has that, that muggy feel to it. Um, doesn't feel like summer, of course, but you can definitely tell there's a kind of huge dew point difference there 
from uh, the moment I arrived to the moment that uh, that storm started to approach. Just definitely a lot heavier and muggy feeling. And it does not take a, a meteorologist really to know uh, when that warm front hits you. It is a pretty hard thing to miss. They're just kind of immediately felt the uh, difference in the density of that air for sure. All right, Seth, we're going to check back in with you soon. Uh, just keep us updated. If you hear something, let us know. Or you say, This is why we're going to keep that coverage going. This was actually in Macoupin County a little earlier this uh, afternoon. Um, this came from a friend, Tyler Abbott, uh, Abbottman down there. He's a great chaser, great guy, and he got this photo. That's the tornado right there, isn't that? wild to see and so there's likely been some damage in parts of montgomery mccoupin counties not even just from the tornado some of the hail as well we've had some reports of golf ball size hail uh, out in the region as well a lot of folks probably watching let's get an area wide view what's going on with this first off uh, for the most part the i-72 corridor is looking better with this trend here it seems to be more to the south of i-72 which had the highest threat for severe weather that was always the greater concern but still the risk is there that areas to the north may still see some wind and hail as more storms develop starting to see a little bit of that occur here in mccoupin montgomery county a couple of little cells there that's not gonna be a tornado threat for sangamon county thankfully we think that maybe has a chance for some hail we're seeing some showers and thunder showers build on in as well here i'll turn on the lightning and show you uh, what's going on a lot of lightning a lot of attention down here, and rightfully so, with that uh, cluster and line of storms moving on through. They got a little bit there in areas west of Springfield, some of these thunder showers that are popping up and continuing to move off to the east. Uh, again, that's not going to be too much of a concern for us as far as the 20 to threat. The warm front is moving away, but there may be some small hail potential out of these. And then we are seeing some thunder showers develop also from Gibson City towards Bloomington off to the south, Farmer City, Clinton, and Ellsworth. Some rumbles of thunder likely, but not overall a big concern for that. And uh, so we're going to continue to monitor. The focus is down here on these storms moving through Southern Christian and into Montgomery County. And you heard Seth say it, it's getting kind of messy down there. Um, we are seeing a lot of lightning, a lot of individual cells. He's out here. My dad's in this mess over here, and uh, he's reporting some rotation within that. It's just going to look a lot more messy, harder to see it compared to that photo we had earlier because as we move forth, uh, really the big concern is, is going to be that these circulations may be rain-wrapped, and that may be a problem for us as we watch these storms moving off to the east at 40 miles an hour. Let's bring back up our velocity, kind of spot some things here. First off, it looks like our circulation now going to be right south of Raymond. Right in here is where one spot of concern is, and uh, we've got some other areas as well. Now into southern Montgomery County, that'll be south and east of Staunton. Uh, Staunton sits there on I-55. You got Gillespie, Staunton. This will be moving off to the east. We'll keep an eye through Fayette County and into Effingham County as that line continues. And look at all those tornado warnings there. Wow, you see them lined up. Uh, all the way further to the south, including down uh, into the St. Louis metro and points to the east where the National Weather Service is saying, hey, these, these storms are all rotating and in different spots. It's hard to keep track of an individual. We're just going to blanket warning the entire area for a tornado warning um, with that. So far, I think we've had five or six tornadoes to the south and west of Springfield down towards St. Louis, but uh, a little hard to keep track with these circulations that spin up, move on through. Perhaps the strongest tornado has been from our supercell that's now moving into Montgomery County and Southern Christian County, uh, and that is going to be closing in uh, to this far Southern Christian County before long here with that tornado warning in Montgomery County. Uh, Morrisonville, probably going to get a little hail, probably going to get a little hail in Vanderville, at least some rain and thunder out of it, to, that the circulation is going to be not far south of the county line there, maybe a mile or two as it continues off to the east and starts to pick up. So soon we'll be heading towards Nokomis, and uh, eventually after that we'll really watch, I think, uh, for places like Pena, Tower Hill, Oconee, Cowden, Herrick, in the Shelby County, and, uh, Van, the uh, Fayette County, Vandalia area, and eventually into Effingham County as well. Sangamon County, I think you're 20th threat. We were thinking that might be a little south, and that's played out. So I think you're going to probably be okay here for the evening. We'll keep an eye on that. Maybe some thunder showers and a potential for some wind and hail with any storms that develop. And that may be the case looking at the trend for Decatur and Champaign Urbana and Danville. The scenario that could unfold, though, is if our warm front continues to lift north and pull that low with it, maybe we do see more storms develop and come along with that. That has not been the case yet, but that is certainly something that we're watching here uh, with this line of storms that's moving on in. Okay, let me uh, pop up. I'm going to try looking at radar in a couple of different ways. First off, what you see now is called reflectivity. Reflectivity basically is the base radar. If you open up your WCI3 weather app, you look at that, you see that... Uh, 
that color palette and the more red and orange and even some pinks in there, the, the heavier the rain and storms and maybe even some hail in there. When we look at our velocity, we're actually looking at how our, our particles, our, our samplings uh, move around within that. And that gives us a view of rotation. One thing we've got going on here is in this area, the, the radar is a little further away than maybe we'd like. Uh, it's up in Lincoln, north of, Saint, of, of Springfield. The other one's down in St. Louis. So I'm going to bounce between both radars and kind of peek at it. That's the Lincoln one. Here's the St. Louis one. That one looks a lot more impressive to me. Uh, maybe it's a little bit closer there. There's your circulation. Likely some really strong wind coming in, too, south of Raymond. Uh, that'll be crossing between Hillsboro and Nokomis before long. And uh, a couple of little areas stand out in the Raymond area, but that is wrapped up in the rain, which can make this challenging. What we are seeing here is this is going to be called our rear flank downdraft. Basically what that is is it's the wind wrapping around the backside of the storm. And a lot of times when we see that wind surge like this here, uh, that surge of wind can sometimes help with tornado formation. So that may be the case here for northern Montgomery County before long and really close to the Christian County line. So that's where we're going to keep this coverage going here for a little bit. Look down further than the line. Wow. Look at all that wind down there. Uh, going to be a real windbag coming through uh, parts of uh, uh, the uh, I-70 corridor as that continues off to the east. Eventually, Fayette County, maybe Effingham County, something to watch. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. And there's been quite a few different tornadoes as well reported with that, something that uh, we've been monitoring for the last little bit. Okay, um, this is WCI 3 News at 6. We're going to keep the coverage going here for the next bit. So it might be a bit of a night for us. Waiting to see what the National Weather Service decides with this circulation here. Uh, I've been chatting with the National Weather Service in Lincoln. One thing we have is in Montgomery County, this is the National Weather Service office in St. Louis that covers them. In Christian County, it's the National Weather Service in Lincoln. And um, they are saying at this point they're going to keep the severe thunderstorm warning for the Christian County side just because of the... Uh, um, the hail and the wind threat, 60 mile per hour winds and, and uh, some quarter size hail. Uh, it's not going to be for Taylorville. In fact, let me pull up the other radar for you here. We'll go back to reflectivity. Uh, that's going to be for Morrisonville, uh, Illinois 48 there to the south, Vanderville. Uh, and if we keep this trend, a lot of that rain may be heading towards Pena as well, something that we'll be watching uh, pretty closely here over the next bit. Uh, what I want to do real quick is I do think I have a picture update. Um, I'll pull that up. I think that might come on Max 1. Max 1 is a seven-day for now. Okay, there's Seth. Uh, so he's out there right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over to Max 1 really quick and uh, pop that on really fast so I can show you some of the storms that we've been seeing here. So uh, if we'll have Max 1 ready to go full here. I should be able to see the Apple TV in a second. I want to show you some video that came in from the Raymond area. I believe this was west of Raymond. And uh, there we go. We can see that now. This is that storm. Hard to see. That's one thing we're struggling with. And, and there's some comparison between what Seth is seeing and what we're seeing on some of the viewer videos and pictures we're coming in. A lot messier. Not quite as clear of a shot with that image as we've had with other ones. And so that certainly is something that uh, we have to keep an eye on because uh, it's going to be hard to make anything out in these storms as they continue to move off to the east. Let's go to Seth. I'm going to bring Seth's shot up and uh, check in with him as well. Um, Seth is out there. There you are. You're moving. It looks like you're, you're looking out the back camera trying to stay ahead of these storms, Seth. How uh, have those road conditions been? How's the driving been? And uh, you, you keeping ahead of things out there? Yeah, for the most part, uh, Jacob, just a, a little indecisive on, I, I thought I wanted to cut it south there for a second, but there's just so much rain developing uh, kind of on the, uh, just out ahead of this thing. There's super thick reflectivity right in the uh, right in the center of that rotation. And then there's some pretty dark reflectivity uh, farther down with some pretty light stuff in between. I would like to be in that light stuff, but I'm gonna need to wait for this to move just a little bit to my east. I'm actually on my way to Oakney right now. I'm, I'm hoping that by the time I get there, kind of let that uh, front round of rain pass through. I might get a little bit more of that kind of quiet area and dive a little bit south, maybe towards the Ramsey area. But you, uh, you're certainly right about what you said. It, it's really hard to make too much out here at the moment with all that rain uh, developing out in front. I, I will say driving conditions, they're not bad. This is just a kind of ho-hum uh, thunderstorm. This portion of the storm is anyway. Of course, the, uh, the rotation part there is the part we need to continue to uh, watch out for as it is uh, out there to the west. Uh, maybe places like Irving or Witt uh, need to definitely be ready for that one to move on in any minutes. But out this direction, still kind of just that uh, 
regular thunderstorm, not super windy. It is raining quite a bit. I haven't had any hail here in this part of the storm. It's just some of that annoying rain, Jacob, that, that sometimes just uh, forms out ahead of these storms. You got to kind of just uh, sit through it for it to uh, clear up there. And then eventually you kind of see the uh, part of the storm that you want to. All right, thanks for that, Seth. Yeah, we're kind of saying the same thing. It's kind of hard to tell. But one thing that catches my eye is I think we're actually in a storm merging. And when we see these mergers, sometimes that can uh, bring that tornado threat up a little bit. Look at this core of red here with that green backwards C shape. We got a lot of wind surging around here. So the potential, I think, for um, a tornado in northern Montgomery County, right along and south of the Christian County line, may be increasing here over the next five minutes. Also on Max 1, um, I actually have a new video that I want to share real quick here. Uh, and so you can see that this just came from the Raymond area. Um, from my dad out there, he, a lot of lightning, the rain, it's hard to see, but he's kind of getting in the back side of that. And that's going to allow him to uh, maybe get a better vantage point. It's hard to see when these storms are, are rain wrapped and things of that. Uh, but uh, the storm spotters are out there are keeping an eye on things. Uh, and if you're interested in that, National Weather Service in the springtime holds classes. They like to send folks out to uh, monitor things. So uh, that's uh, certainly something that uh, is, is helpful. When we get eyes in the sky and are able to see what's going on and, and uh, be a part of that process for us here. So there's that video again from the, the Raymond area. East of there now is where he's at. Uh, probably playing in the same area as Seth is there. All right, I'm going to switch to uh, graphics real quick here on Max 2 and uh, kind of show what we're seeing, give you a different vantage point here. This is where I'm starting to get a little more concerned with this area of rotation that's here south of Raymond. You see that? backwards shape see here what's happening is we're surging out and sometimes in the back side of these storms you could actually get uh, some rotation to spin up and uh, just checking with the national weather service um you know they're listing all of these circulations but there it is showing up maybe a little bit better for us uh right there to the east of Raymond by about three miles. So Raymond at this point uh, is, is getting ready to be all clear for you, but Nokomis, Ullman, Pena, we're gonna watch that. And this is right south of the county line. The other thing is sometimes these mergers, if that warm front continues to lift north, this might pull that storm a little bit more north into Southern Christian County. That has not been the case yet, but that is something that we've got to watch here as I think the potential for a tornado may be increasing in this part of the storm. You'll also see further down the line, Right here, north of Hillsboro, another area of circulation catching my eye. And uh, as we move further to the south, then probably have to switch radars on that uh, to get a peek. They've been also watching another circulation um, that has been uh, down to the south of Litchfield. That's there in the Sorrento area. That's going to probably head towards Vandalia and eventually into Effingham County, which is something that uh, we'll be, be watching pretty closely here as we keep you updated. Time now is 6.33. We're at WCI3 News at 6.30 on extended coverage due to severe storms here in the area as we're watching these supercell thunderstorms carry on through the area with uh, what's already been an active tornado event for parts of southwestern central Illinois and likely the next few hours going to continue to be that way. And so we will be... Uh, watching closely as these things evolve. I'm going to do real quick. I get a little artsy on you here. Follow with me. We'll, we'll draw a line and kind of say who's in, who's out at this point um, with that severe weather threat. And uh, so I'm going to draw this line as it pops up. Uh, we're going to go with um, who's still got to watch and who maybe is clear here. I tend to think that about this line right here, Anything south of that line, have to watch for severe weather. That's going to include Christian County, areas south of Decatur, uh, areas south of Champaign. I tend to think that the severe weather threat probably is not going to materialize along I-72, which is great news for a lot of folks here. I'm sure some folks are happy to hear that. While I say that, there still could be some thunderstorms that come through later, through Ch Champaign, Decatur, Clinton, even towards Danville. This is that area that we'll have to watch as uh, perhaps these supercells have helped in our favor further to the north, keeping that, that warm front from going too far to the north here. But if that warm front lifts in, I think we'll watch for Matthew and Charleston, Effingham. We'll watch for Shelby County. We'll watch for Edgar County and keep an eye on those areas as well as we uh, continue to monitor things now. Let's uh, check back in with Seth if we can. It looks like he's in some rain. Uh, I've seen his shot coming out there a little bit. Uh, uh, Seth, we see the rain falling around you, and uh, we can hear you a little bit. Maybe talk to us about where you're at, and I'll try and give you an update on radar for us here. Maybe we've lost Seth. Uh, 
Yeah, he's got a weak signal now. He's, he's in that part of the world. I know we're going to fight that uh, for a little bit where uh, he's probably having some problems with his IFB as well. So that's uh, not surprising to me here. All right, uh, watching things now. And Montgomery County, Macoupin County, all clear. All clear in Macoupin County. Uh, you can see on my right, so oh, we just took the trouble box down there. Um, you can see on the right here is the radar. This is now Montgomery County. We're watching Southern Sh Christian and Shelby counties before long here as this continues off to the east. And uh, then into Fayette counties that eventually could see the I-57 corridor from Mountain Charleston points to the south. The northernmost storm is the most interesting looking storm. Uh, it makes me think back to a few tornado events we've had before where there's this kink in the line. And that's where you can get the circulation in place. And uh, they can spin up pretty quickly, which is a, a concern for us here. At this point, I don't think there's anything down with it. Uh, but uh, it's evolving in the right direction to where something may change with that uh, as we go the next 15, 20 minutes or so. And from a circulation standpoint as well, kind of just looking at some new data over here on the sides, um, something that may also play in the favor is if you see these storms popping up here, this kind of is giving the main storm a, a, a line to follow. And it also, as these storms interact and merge with each other, may help to increase that rotation a little bit. So that certainly is going to be a concern for us here before long. All right, we got Seth back. Seth is out there now. It looks like he's in a little more of an open area. Uh, you can see him in the bottom right of your screen. Uh, Seth, tell us where you are, what you're seeing, and uh, we'll give you a radar update as well. Yeah, thanks, Jacob. I am uh, currently just outside of Okanee. I'm about, uh, I would say, about a mile away, uh, still heading east. It still is just kind of a mess out here. I've got my uh, back camera on, just kind of look at what's uh, coming there behind me. But uh, it, it certainly is messy here right now. Um, I'm, I'm trying my best to kind of dig out of this rain so that way I can get a, a better shot at the actual uh, storm out there. But it's uh, there's just quite a bit developing out in front of it. Like you said, these mergers can be just a little bit difficult and kind of just watching. There's all kinds of, you know, broad signatures and maybe a little bit of extra rotation here and there. So just kind of keeping my eye out here, trying to decide what the best path is to take. I'm on the way into Shelby County here right now. And if I dive south right now, I'm going to get hit by quite a bit of rain. Um, so just kind of trying to race to the east so that way I can kind of cut back south in this thing to get just a little bit better of a view looking to the northwest as opposed to uh, looking from the northeast like we're kind of uh, stuck here right now on our way into Okanee. So we're going to try to cut it a little bit east here so that way we can stay out of that rain and then hopefully we're going to be able to kind of cut it south and get a better, uh, better viewpoint there of that rotation that is uh, still kind of following us out there to the west over in uh, portions of Montgomery County here right now, Jacob. Are keeping an eye on things for you here again he's in a coney and uh, so that's going to be located kind of in the center of the screen on the radar uh, so we'll watch his shot keep an eye on that uh we can either keep the trim box or we can come in and out uh he's going to see a lot of rain that's what it is uh for you seth i know you can hear me right now their area of rotation is basically your west about 10 miles or so uh, it's between raymond and nokomis and it's going to pretty much run right east along the county line there heading towards shelby county um and and i think to be totally honest, I think we might be close to having a tornado wrapped up in the rain there. Uh, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine miles west of Nokomis, um, where that rotation signature continues to get stronger and stronger to me. Um, it's not uh, immediately on the ground, but I think that's something we're going to have watch. And the problem for you, Seth, is it's on the backside here. If you think back to uh, some of the storms where we've been following them, that's where we had a better vantage point. So you may have to, to duck around and uh, try and avoid that. And we'll keep you updated as well here. So he's still a safe distance in front. He's fighting some of the storms that are ahead of it. Uh, but that certainly is something that we'll have to watch uh, for a bit. Let's real quick do a, a quick area check here. Because what we've had happen is we have had a severe thunderstorm watch extended for some of our counties here. Now you can see these pink colored counties. And guess what? They've actually been the counties we've been watching for this. Uh, this new severe thunderstorm watch is going to go um, until, let me check the time here real fast, 2 a.m. I don't think it's going to last till 2 a.m. for us locally. I think we're done by 10, 11. Uh, but the watch area itself will, and they've extended it to include, let's see, that's going to be Coles, Cumberland. We've got Clark, Edgar counties there, uh, which is some good news. At this point, I think we're going to watch Sangamon and Morgan County maybe drop off before long. 
Um, so that kind of highlights the threat area, and that matches very well with where our risk for severe weather has been here now. Uh, the enhanced risk, look at that. I mean, that's, that's pretty carbon copy. That was our greatest potential. The concern was, okay, well, what if that front decides to take off 50 miles to the north? We're not that good at being able to say that front's moving at this speed or at this rate, uh, but we certainly have to watch those types of features. And so that's why that slight risk was pulled north to account for some trends that may have depicted that being a possibility with that. But uh, we're, we're, we're feeling good at this point for Champaign, Decatur, Springfield, and probably even Danville as far as the tornado potential goes. But as you look off to the west, um, you see here, where there are a few storms trying to pop up there in the Springfield area. And real quick, I'll actually pull the Springfield camera up uh, just to get a, a view of that. Um, and that's something we can also watch. Keep an eye on that Springfield camera. Eventually, we'll be using our Matthew Charleston, maybe our Decatur camera and Effingham camera. And so I'll let you guys in the back if at any point you want to pull those up and put those in the boxes as well. Uh, so let me get the Springfield camera on here. And I'll pull it on my graphics here just so we can kind of get a peek at things. There are some storms coming into um, the Springfield area. Wow, look at that. That's a really pretty view there. Uh, of some non-severe thunderstorms coming into the Springfield area, but certainly they look pretty interesting. Um, and uh, we'll pan around. Wow, Jennifer Roscoe's in here. That's, that's uh, quite a quite a nice looking shelf cloud there west of Springfield coming in, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So uh, non-severe for Sangamon County, but it's a lot of us probably in the I-72 corridor are going to get a view like that there. Um, coming before long, but it seems like the severe threat might be more to the south and uh, south of I-72, which is some, some good news for that. Okay, let me just check. I got some new information coming on in here. Um, the storm coming towards Nokomis, starting to wrap up a little bit more. It's been moving in that right direction. And uh, so we'll have to watch here. Um, in fact, we now just got a new tornado warning that's issued for parts of Christian and Shelby County. How about that? Uh, so we are here for you. It is 642 now. Sirens going off in parts of Shelby County, parts of Christian County as well. This is not going to include Taylorville. I will zoom in here and I'm going to put the warning only on, talk about who's in and who's out. Uh, this is not going to include Taylorville. I zoom out. There you can see here, Taylorville sits right here. This will include the far southeastern part, including Pena, also going to be western Shelby County, basically from Shelbyville to the west. That's going to include um, Cowden and Herrick. It's going to include Oconee. It's going to include um, Tower Hill. And uh, it will not include at this point Strasburg, Stewardson, or Windsor. But in that direction, these storms are going to continue to move that way, which is going to be uh, an issue for us. And uh, so, hey, I think we're, we're looking at that uh, circulation tightening up a little bit, maybe. Uh, if it can hold together here, it's located about six miles west of Nokomis. Nokomis sits right here, so there's still some time. But you, you, you get an idea for what the National Weather Service is looking at and how the environment is, where they're saying, yeah, we're just going to issue that tornado warning out. Uh, so now new tornado warning just issued for Christian and Shelby counties. Also, look at Fayette County. The National Weather Service has just said, yep, Fayette County, all of you, tornado warning, whole county, uh, because of this line of storms. The problem is, is on the setup like this, is we're not seeing necessarily a well-defined supercell thunderstorm with a single area of rotation. Instead, we're getting a line of these coming on through, and that line is allowing for these spin-ups, these little uh, kinks in the line to occur. Uh, when that happens, you get some rotation that spins up pretty quickly and it may last five, 10 minutes and then it goes away and then it lasts a little bit longer. That's kind of the game that we're playing. There's a couple of areas that are standing out. One of those is in that Northern cell. It's located there West of Nokomis. Um, it's going to be North of Irving, West of Nokomis. Now it looks kind of blobular and, you know, just a bunch of color on the radar, but this back kink right here is what interests me most about that. And that's why they've gone ahead and extended the warning into parts of Christian and uh, Shelby County. And we've been on air for you in Christian Shelby County, giving you a little bit of a heads up on that uh, to kind of keep you, you up to date on things with the chance that's going on. Looking a little further down the line, I don't want to ignore the other spots here. Uh, I do want to bring the velocity. It's going to be our best friend. You see a lot of rain like that, hard to make things stand out. But you look down the line here, there's a little spot right here, south of Nokomis now. There's a little spot there to the east of Hillsboro. 
And uh, all along that leading edge is where we've got to watch some of these little signatures continue to pop on in. And let me switch to the St. Louis radar as well to kind of give us maybe a different view on it. Um, more of that surging wind eventually down there on I-70. That's going to be in uh, Bond County. Some other areas of circulation showing up east of Greenville and, and uh, even up the line. So that's kind of how things are going to be here as we, we move on through things tonight with this line going to look a little more kinky in nature. And that's going to allow for the rotation to continue before all is said and done. Okay, let's reset. Hit the area wide. Talk about what's going on. Folks in Springfield. You got a nice shelf cloud coming. In fact, if you get any of the information of the shelf cloud or any photos, things like that, we do love to see those here. Um, and I'm just checking my messenger as well. There's about 50 different ways we can get information. Um, and kind of look at some information that came in a little earlier. Um, it sounds like folks in Raymond, the sirens are not working down there, but uh, they reported maybe a possible tornado uh, near I-55 and Route 48 uh, moving towards Raymond earlier. That's since clear. Raymond's all clear, um, but uh, that's been something that we've had to watch uh, and keep an eye on here. A little further to the north, I'm just going to check these other storms. I want to keep an eye on them because one thing we have to watch is where that warm front is. And I'm pretty certain the warm front is not in place with these storms here in Sangamon County. Yeah, that's not a, a, a surface-based storm. There could be maybe a little hail, maybe some gusty winds coming on through in Sangamon County here. We'll pop that camera back up in Springfield just so we can look at it. Um, but uh, I'm not too concerned for the Sangamon County storm coming on through. But boy, that's a that's a view there that, that is showing up. Uh, and so that certainly is uh, something that we'll watch. Probably a lot of us get a chance to see that before all is said and done. But um, you know, we'll see a shelf cloud come through, get some blustery winds. That's the cold front sweeping to the backside. Um, but for the tornado threat, it really seems like it's going to be contained to the south of I-72, which for folks in Springfield, Decatur, Champaign, Danville, that's good news for us here. But we do have to watch for our friends in Shelby, Christian County, Effingham County, Coles, Cumberland, and uh, Clark and Edgar counties as well. And so that's why we're going to keep this coverage going for uh, a bit here. Um, other than that... Um, just checking out some some of the data here on the side. I do want to show you here. One of the things that we're looking for is where that warm front is. And uh, temperatures across the area is a beautiful day for, for many of us. Um, a beautiful day for many of us here. And uh, but you can see the dew point values. That kind of tells us where that severe threat is. We got a dew point of six. Say it again. Okay, let's go to Seth real quick. Uh, Seth, check on in. Uh, what do you got for us? Yeah, Jacob, I'm gonna try my best to get on my camera here just off to, oh, there went the camera. All right, I will try to move it around here just a little bit. It kind of fell off the windshield. Um, but I do have some structure just off to my uh, to my right here, just a little bit of a lowering, and I do apologize that I lost my camera there, so I'll just kind of narrate over it. There is uh, quite a bit of a lowering just off to my west. I'm just about to get into Ramsey. I'm in Fayette County. It's it's a definite looking wall cloud. I'm not, uh, not seeing too much on the lowering. It does, uh, it's obviously a pronounced lowering there, the wall cloud. I'm not seeing intense rotation, but I am seeing some broad rotation there. So I am going to kind of keep my eye on that. Of course, kind of fix my camera a little bit too, try to cut it a little too hard to the right, but I'm just entering into Ramsey right now. Probably gonna stop and see if I can get a look out there to the west, Jacob, but definitely starting to see that a lower form as it enters into uh, Fayette County. Uh, Seth, do you have a location again? Can you say your location one more time for me? Yeah, I'm just about to get into Ramsey. I'm just maybe a mile north of Ramsey right now up there in the northwest corner of Fayette. Okay, so so you're out there. Uh, we actually see some developing rotation in that storm northwest of Ramsey. That's what you're looking at, isn't it? Correct, yes. And like I said, I was tr trying to get you a good view of that there. Um, this road is not uh, very friendly with facing me in that direction. That's why I'm hoping once I get into Ramsey, I can try to get some sort of view of it there. But I can definitely see, even though I couldn't get on the camera, they're definitely seeing a bit of a lowering just off to the west. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me show you where Seth's at on radar. So he's here in Ramsey. Um, and uh, we're going to come back to him in a bit here. He's in Ramsey. This storm right here is actually lifting to the north and reaching that warm front, and so he's actually in a very good spot to follow US-51 uh, kind of from Ramsey into the north there. We might see something happen before all is said and done, kind of looking at that latest radar imagery. Um, a little bit of little bit of rotation popping up in that area, uh, and that's going to be lifting north. So we got storms moving north. We got storms moving east, and all this is causing some problems here. Uh, but he is on a spot, which is really interesting to me. I'll try and see if we can't spot it here. Uh, let me switch to a different radar really fast. Um, 
Let me see here. I'm going to switch to my St. Louis radar, see if it appears better. We're kind of in an area where the radar doesn't give us the best vantage point, but there is certainly some rotation showing up uh, in the areas here. And I'm going to switch over to my other computer as well. Let's play that game. There you, oh, there you can really see it right there, west of Ramsey. Uh, west and northwest of Ramsey. So uh, concern growing for southwestern Shelby, northern Fayette counties, that circulation popping up there. Seth may be on to something. Um, so if we can, I'd like to keep him up maybe for a little bit. Uh, we want to just keep an eye on there. Uh, Seth, if you can hear me, if you are in Ramsey, the storm is going to go north parallel to US 51 for a little bit. So I think you've got a vantage point maybe. I know that area's got a lot of trees. Uh, what direction are you, are you heading now? What can't direction are we looking at with the camera? Yep, I'm uh, just entering uh, one side of Ramsey right now, Jake. I'm going to try to get you a decent shot of this uh, lowering. Again, kind of working with my camera just a little bit here because unfortunately it did kind of fall itself off the windshield here. But I'll try to get you the best view that I can without kind of uh, trespassing too far in territory here. Got some trees that I'm dealing with just a little bit. I'll get myself kind of set up here just a moment. But I am just entering Ramsey from the north side of town, kind of getting things set up for you here. It's not going to be the best look here. I do have a shed right next to me, but I'll pop it up here right now. Starting to see, you can see some of that scud down there at the bottom. Unfortunately, a little bit of that tree in the way, but uh, definitely seeing that uh, pretty structured wall cloud uh, just on the other side of this building. I might try to head into town a little more, Jacob, to see if I can get just a little bit of a better view. But uh, this is definitely the center of the storm getting ready to head into uh, northwestern Fayette County right now. Yeah, Seth, I think your best vantage point uh, with the storm moving north, if you go north from Ramsey, I'm kind of looking at the map here, and you once you cross the, the little creek bridge there, about two miles, you might get a better clearing from that. Uh, but be very careful in that area as that storm is showing some, some rotation uh, increasing northwest of Ramsey. So we've got concern now for the Ramsey area, the Oconee area. This is also going to be a concern for Cowden and Herrick. I really want to reach uh, those folks there. What we've got going on is this storm lifting north, is rotating. This storm coming to the east is rotating as well. And so we may deal with multiple areas of rotation. He's got a great vantage point there, actually. Um, we're really seeing it. Let's bring that uh, double box so we can just kind of admire it there. That is looking off to the northwest. Is that right, Seth? Yes, it is, Jacob. I'm going to drive into the grass just a little bit here, try not to scuff too much up, but I've got a pretty decent view of the storm here right now. You're correct, looking just off to that northwest side. Um, Definitely looking pretty good. It looks very, uh, very broad, very wide. I'm not seeing anything kind of standing out uh, through the trees here. There's nothing any lower than the actual uh, base of the wall club that you see, but certainly uh, the area of interest here at the moment, Jacob. Yeah, and um, if we can production, I lost my, my story wall. If I can get that back to watch with his shot there. Seth, are you seeing any rotation? It's pretty broad. I'm not seeing anything rapidly here. Um, it, it's definitely moving around. I don't see anything. Actually, I'm starting to see just a little bit uh, aloft. I'll try to get that up there for you. You can kind of just see what's going on up there. Some pretty rapid cloud movement up in that direction. Maybe nothing down there at the base of the storm, but it's definitely uh, moving somewhere up there in it. Seth, that rotation is really intensifying in the hurricane area. If we can, I'd like to keep his shot up. Let's double box or, or give me a triple box with him in the corner because he may have a tornado at any moment here. But I need to talk about where this is uh, so folks at home can see. So if that's possible, there we go. Uh, what we're looking at is Seth is located right here in Ramsey. Look at that intense rotation signature to the northwest of Ramsey. That is lifting to the north and east a bit. It may meander a bit. So Seth's got a great vantage point. And if you at any point, Seth, see something, holler and let us snow because we're going to watch it like a hawk there. Uh, this is going to be a concern northern Fayette, southern Shelby County here. Um, there's another area of rotation starting to pop up to the west of uh, the little town of Hurricane. Look, community, little, little couple houses out there. Uh, that other storm coming in. And so as they interact with each other, that certainly is going to be a uh, cause for concern for us here as we um, continue to watch. Seth, are, are you seeing any changes? It looks like to me maybe it's getting a little lower there. Yeah, it absolutely has gotten lower here just within the last 60 seconds or so. It's just such a large area here, and I'm starting to see some pretty decent movement. I'll try to zoom in here real quick if I can. Starting to see some decent movement right here in this particular spot of the storm, kind of just watching through the camera here. But there's uh, there's quite a bit going on, Jake. We might have something here at some point, but uh, just kind of keeping an eye on it. It's, it's starting to look like it might want to do something here before too long. 
I do not disagree with you at all, Seth. Uh, concern very much for US 51 from Ramsey off to the north. A really unique setup. And, and Seth, do you have a vantage point more to the west as well? Are you able to see this other storm kind of merging in from the west there? Um, I can. I'm looking through trees. I, it won't be a very good look on the camera here. I don't see too much directly to my west. Of course, I got just a little bit of a building in the way, but it just kind of looks like general kind of thunderstorm structure out that direction. So nothing too crazy or intimidating from my vantage point directly to my west, just out here to the north and west. Yeah, keep your eyes on a swivel because that next storm is coming in. And as this lines up, you've got a great vantage point. We may have something uh, before all is said and done with this rapid area of rotation now. Um, so this is going to be for Oconee, Ramsey. If it continues to the north, uh, it's been moving kind of north and east in the southwestern Shelby County. Gr big concern with that storm right there that you're watching, Seth, with that rotation increasing. Um, and uh, man, Seth. This, you, you found a great spot. You're, you're giving us some great imagery here. Um, do you, what's your plan as far as when the, the storm to your west comes? Do you have an escape route to the east? Jacob, I'm thinking right now, I, I, I can't promise how good the road structure is going to be. I'm somewhat familiar with things out here in Fayette. I'm thinking maybe Beecher City. It looks like there's a road that leads east out of Ramsey here. I, I don't know how good of a road it is, but I kind of don't have too much of a choice. I don't really want to go too far south because there's a, a lot of interest in my south as well. But I'm thinking maybe just towards maybe Beecher City area keeps me out of the rain and keeps me out ahead of this one here if it gets too close. Yeah, I'm kind of looking too for you here. It looks like that rotation is going to stay west of US 51 and lifting to the north northeast. When it merges with the line, that's probably going to give it a shove to the east there. Um, and, and I think as they merge, we may see something – you're bringing us some incredible shots from the storm tracker here of this rotating wall cloud that Seth's on. Uh, so we're going to watch that very closely here over the next five to 10 minutes. And uh, again, Seth, uh, let's keep a shot if we can, if we can triple box that and you just start hollering and you see, look at that. You see how, how that is so low to the ground. It, it, it's surging in there, isn't it? So we got Seth out yeah, there. Yeah, 100% is. It's Man, God, it, it, if something happens here, you're going to be on it. Uh, that rotation is now between Ramsey and Oconee on US 51, right about the county line. Uh, one of the issues that's happening here, as you see on radar, uh, I'll pop it back to reflectivity, and, and I'm keeping an eye on that. Brandon's keeping an eye on that, too. I bet Brandon wishes he was out there with you. He, he does a little bit. Wow. There. Wow. What that was a, a shot that was there a with the lightning. Impressive strike of lightning there. What we're seeing is this line here is moving in. And as that happens, we might see the, the rotation pick up a little bit. It's moving more to the north, um, but that might force it a little bit more to the east. So the concern now here is Oconee, Herrick, Cowden, Ramsey, uh, the hurricane area. We've got um, uh, all of Fayette County in a tornado warning. Montgomery County, we're getting close to being able to say all clear. Um, can we bring Seth's shot back full? The, the views he's giving us here, that is very low in the distance. Seth, are you seeing the rotation increase at all? It, it still looks about the same to me okay. as it did earlier, Jacob. I'm starting to run in just a little bit of difficulty now with the trees in the distance. The base of the storm's probably going to get hidden behind those Seth before full? too long. So I might have to kind of get kind of might have to get moving here to make sure that the uh, trees aren't in my way of the uh, the view of what could potentially be uh, further lowering here from the storm. It's it's certainly moving around, especially up top there. Um, it's probably about what it was there just a, a couple minutes ago, but this thing is uh, definitely not losing any of its strength here right now, Jacob. Yeah, uh, so this is in southwestern Shelby County. Seth is out there. Uh, and he's, he's watching that area of rotation very, very closely now. Uh, that storm was standing out for a bit by itself. It is now starting to get uh, swallowed up by the line, and I think that's what's happening. As you can kind of see on the right side of the screen, clouds moving from left to right. Before long, he's going to get stuck in that rain uh, as it continues to push on through. Uh, I will say also, potentially, what we're looking at here is uh, there may be another area of rotation, Seth, on the storm further to the east towards the Cowden area, towards Cowden and Herrick, maybe. Um, kind of looking around, uh, that'd be north of northwest of Herrick. This might be a scenario, Seth, where things hand off and we, we kind of see uh, uh, that, that trend continues with these storms. We've had a number of warnings out there today and a number of confirmed tornadoes. And so if this goes, Seth's going to be right there and uh, keeping a very close eye on it. Uh, so, Seth, I'm going to keep you, keep you up. 
Uh, if we can, I'd like to come back and do some radar analysis real quick. And then I am going to show a picture as well at some point. Uh, I'll probably use uh, the Max 2 graphics for that. We're looking at confirmed, uh, I'm sorry, we're looking at a tornado warning now for Shelby and far southeastern Christian County. Uh, this does not include Taylorville. This does not include um, areas towards Strasburg and Stewartson. And really, you look at the risk here. Things are looking fine for a lot of us to the north and west. Our, our tornado potential right now, I think for the most part, is primarily focused on Shelby County. And we zoom in here kind of a mess of these storms running over each other and, and interacting, and that's going to cause some spin and some problems with that. Um, and um, I'm interested a little more to the north and east there of another area of rotation. So, so we're going to keep Seth moving. If you maybe start to move in that direction, Seth, uh, it might be a chance. He's getting the wind. Hey, you can see in the bottom corner of your screen, he's starting to get some of the wind there. So Seth, I think it's time for you to move along and head to the east. And uh, he's going to be, be repositioning to try and stay ahead of things here as the storms continue that direction. But he's in some tough territory. He's in some real tough territory for chasing out there. Uh, but he's getting close to stomping grounds. Seth's in Effingham County, uh, protege. And uh, so I'm sure before long, maybe Seth will be heading to dinner at his mom's or something tonight. So that'll be a heads up for, for them there. Uh, let me get the image of the tornado earlier in Macoupin County. And this is why we're concerned here. Uh, this right here, it's going to pop up in the right side of your screen in a second, is the, uh, the left side of your screen, I should say. Um, let's keep that triple box up if we can, because I like watching Seth's shot with that rain coming on in. This here on the, the left side of your screen is that confirmed tornado earlier in Macoupin County. It caused some problems in the Palmyra area. Uh, a very stout, strong-looking tornado that touched down there and, and was likely on the ground for an extended period of time. And that's why we're continuing our coverage here. Seth is in the field in the storm tracker. He's moving uh, now back uh, into Ramsey, and he'll be heading off to the east at some point, and his shot may come in and out looking at it. I see the sign there pointing to the left, Herrick, 11 miles. Uh, so he'll be heading in one of those directions. Looks like he's heading towards Herrick. So that's some good news to know, and uh, we'll keep an eye on him. It looks like from his shot, the wind not all that strong at this point. Uh, it's blustery, but the lights are still on. We don't see tree branches coming down, but there certainly are some gusty wind in there. So uh, this is why we're continuing the coverage. That right right here on this side of your screen is why our, our coverage will continue. Thanks to Tyler Abbottman for getting me that uh, – Tyler Abbott, I should say, for getting me that photo. He is on Twitter uh, as um, King Abbottman. So uh, thanks for him sharing that with me there. Let's talk here about uh, what's going on. Just checking um, – Checking in some other sources. We've got tornado sirens in Pena. We've got um, um, being reported, and I should check the chat real quick and just make sure. Um, we got a, a line of storms and pick it up a little bit actually in the Springfield area. Uh, so that's something else to keep an eye on. I just kind of keep an eye to the north. To me, I th well, I tell you what, I want to figure out where that warm front is. Um, ooh, okay. To me, I can do a little analysis here and figure out those storms may actually be trying to cross into the, the warm sector in Sangamon County. So I think I've been saying um, I feel good about Decatur and Champaign. Uh, we're going to watch these storms. I don't want to rule you out at this point. The low seems to be a little further to the south, though. Um, but I'm just checking some of this uh, this data and figure out where that instability is. Um, that... I'm going to lean more towards that, maybe a hail and a wind threat for Decatur Champagne, but that probably is what we call elevated. When we look at an elevated storm, you've got your surface layer of instability. Uh, there's a layer of stable air, and then you've got your unstable air above that. Uh, that stable air keeps anything from connected down to the ground, but uh, certainly we can cause uh, some wind and some hail in storms like that. If you remember the hail storm back that went through Decatur a week or two ago, that was an elevated storm. It wasn't really a tornado threat with it, but there was a hail threat. That's kind of the situation we're in where wind and hail would dominate in those northern storms. It's the tornado threat that's primarily confining itself to the southern storms here. As uh, Now I'm going to go ahead and give an all clear for Montgomery County. And uh, give me a few more minutes. Everyone except for Pena in Christian County uh, is in the clear. All but Pena in Christian County. And Pena, you're, you're, you're real close to being able to say, let's give you the clear here because of the way things look. Really, that circulation that's uh, starting to pop up near Herrick, see those bright greens and some red in here? We're going to see some more spin-ups happen, and this is going to continue moving towards Herrick and towards Cowden and eventually off to the east. Shelbyville, Tower Hill, Pena, the rotation at this point is to your south. It does not mean you're all clear, but typically I like when you're on the north side of it like you are now. 
Uh, it would take a lot to get that to push more north. Could happen, but uh, paying a couple more minutes, and I'll give Christian County an all clear here. We're just going to watch the circulation that's near Herrick. As it seems like what's kind of happened sometimes is our circulation has kind of uh, uh, lifted north and occluded, and another one forms and lifts north and, and continues that process. And that seems to be what's happening. So we'll have to watch anything that develops ahead of it as well. Bit of a mess then. I'm going to switch radars to uh, a different site to try and get a look in Fayette County. Um, we're kind of getting to that area where it's harder to see things. Um, in, in, in Fayette County, eventually we're going to be bouncing between Lincoln and St. Louis and the Evansville radars for looks here, but there certainly is at least a lot of wind. Vandalia likely getting some wind. Fayette County, tornado warning. In effect, uh, straight line winds and the potential for a tornado. The National Weather Service has been saying that these storms not only are capable of producing uh, tornadoes with them, but also some significant straight line winds. And I think that's definitely the case for Fayette County. So Effingham County, we're going to watch for you. You're, you'll be next in line from that Fayette County mess that's coming out there. And I'm going to make sure our Effingham camera is turned off to the west. And I'll bring that up here in a second because uh, we'll probably start to get a vantage point from that. And so that'll be another tool that we can use as well to keep an eye on the sky. So I'll turn that more to the south and west, and uh, we'll take a peek at that there. But let me go ahead and bring that camera in now. Um, it's turning now. It's looking more to the south, and uh, that'll be turned more to the south and west. And I might have to adjust it a little bit more, see if we get any sort of view from that uh, event there. We'll say we were looking at that northern storm in Sangamon County. They now just did put a severe thunderstorm warning out for that. That's going to be for a wind and hail threat. Um, and I'm turning that camera a little bit more just to prep for when it gets closer. It's hard to see anything at Effingham at this point. Um, that storm is a little far away. But uh, we will go down to Sangamon County and uh, the rest of Christian County to talk about those northern storms that now have a warning. So um, to me, and just checking with the National Weather Service, they're saying for 60 mile per hour winds and uh, some uh, nickel penny size hail possible that I don't think those storms are, are rooted to the surface, which should limit our... Uh, our tornado potential a little, uh, a bit with that, which is good news. Yeah, I'm not seeing uh, a whole lot aloft. Uh, I'm not I'm seeing some here. To me, that more is a wind signature that's showing up there. Uh, that's going to be uh, between 54 and 72 on the north side of 72 there. You've got Iliopolis right here. Um, you've got uh, Springfield sitting over here. This is kind of along and north of that. So we're going to watch that Decatur camera as well and start to look at all these different storms. This here, just a severe thunderstorm warning. To me, I don't think it's a tornado potential, uh, but it is showing some signs of strengthening. Some of our guidance was suggesting, hey, you might start seeing things ramp up a little bit uh, as that happens. And so we're going to watch uh, that Sangamon County. Area. And it's going to include far northern Christian County, western DeWitt County, southwestern uh, southwestern DeWitt County, Western Macon County, and a good chunk of Logan County as well. So this here is probably going to mean mean I was uh, a little off in my thinking that it wouldn't strengthen. It is strengthening, and so that's probably going to put more of a severe threat back on the table. Not tornadic, but maybe wind and perhaps a little hail. Decatur, Monticello, Champaign here over the next few hours as we watch these storms come on through. Yeah, we're kind of in that situation where how are things evolving? I would have expected this to be more in line with the storms to the south. If it was, that would make me think the warm front's a little further north. But I think the warm front has kind of stunted a little more to the south there. And uh, so that's going to be an issue for us. If we can, I'd like to bring me back full here for a little bit and uh, kind of talk about some things um, with the radar and the camera. And uh, so if we can bring camera one back full for me, there we go. Um, I want to kind of talk through. So so the, the warm front seems to be stalling a little bit down here towards Mattoon and Charleston. There is some instability up here. To me, the Sangamon, DeWitt, Logan County, uh, and Christian County, Macon County storm is more elevated. It doesn't, to me, look like it's uh, going to be a severe weather producer uh, beyond wind and hail. But we'll watch if that warm front does decide to race north a little bit. That may still be on the table here. We'll have to keep an eye and uh, continue to monitor that. Let's go ahead and check back in with Seth. He looks like he's in a little bit of a mess down there. Uh, the rain blowing pretty good. A lot of lightning down there. Seth, it's hard to see much of what's going on in your shot. Tell us where you are, what you got. I'm on my way to uh, Beecher City, or at least I'm trying. It, I might not be running the storm. I've, I've got to kind of go a certain pace here just to, uh, just to kind of make it to where it's not blinding. Uh, on my way to Beecher City, as I said, uh, still. All right, so uh, Seth's coming in and out. We'll get him when we can. He's kind of in that neck of the woods. He might be able to hear me at some point here. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that. Um, 
if we can, I'd like to communicate with Seth. Um, I'd say do whatever he can to get to the east into Effingham County. I know he's fighting the rain. He may not be ahead of it, uh, but if he needs to sit for a little bit, that might be the best option. So if somebody in the back kind of, kind of talk with me and we'll see if he pops back up. I know he's down here. There's a lot of trees and cell service isn't great, but he's down here heading between Ramsey and Herrick with the idea he's going to try and snake back into his, his home turf in Effingham County. Uh, what we're seeing in here is a lot of wind at this point, and there is the potential for some rotation that's in those areas. We're seeing that. See where these little green colors kind of kink around there. There's little notches in the line. Uh, that's the areas of rotation now. All clear Christian County. Christian County, Pena, all clear. I'm going to give that Shelby County, not primarily while we're here. Eventually, that's going to be for even parts of Effingham County and uh, off to the east, we think, with the way things are, are progressing. And with these storms that are moving um, down I-72, probably going to see some wind before long coming into the Decatur area. So I'm going to flip over to that camera and make sure it's pointed to the west so we can watch all of those. Keep an eye on things here before all is said and done. Um, and uh, we'll get that camera turned. I'll bring that up for you. It's nice to have these cameras out there. I did need to check the social media chat as well. Remember, we are digital coverage. We are streaming and uh, continuing to watch things uh, play out pretty uh, pretty well here with the, the storms that are coming on through. Okay, uh, one thing I know folks uh, in Champaign kind of saying, hey, we're looking pretty good here. We're looking okay. Uh, that is the case for now. we got to watch these storms coming on through. The tornado potential right now is mainly in Shelby County. And that's what we're dealing with. This here is our Effingham camera. You just saw some lightning on that. Let me bring up the other camera, and um, I'm going to switch to the Decatur one here, and we'll get that one pop up in just a second. And this will be looking more to the west, and not seeing a whole lot from this vantage point yet. Storms are still a little ways away, but as they come closer to the camera, that's going to give us a much better vantage point of what this storm is. I think it's going to be more elevated. I don't think it's going to be quite as surface-based with things, and so that's going to... Um, be what we, we look for that. I think, again, the tornado potential should stay south of 72, but we're just going to watch this and keep an eye on things here. So that Decatur camera certainly is going to be our friend as we move on through. Uh, okay, let's kind of reset here, do an area-wide view. That storm coming out of Springfield. We saw that shelf cloud. Looks pretty good now. Uh, it's now east of Springfield. Springfield, you're done with the severe threat. This basically is Lincoln to eastern Sangamon County. And uh, we're going to have it all clear for the severe threat. Also for McCoop and Montgomery, M Morgan counties. S Christian County, you're kind of splitting the gap. The northern part of the county there towards Mount Auburn and uh, areas to the south and west of Decatur. Technically in that severe thunderstorm warning, that's going to be a wind event that comes to the east. But we've got these tornado warnings further off to the south that uh, we'll have to watch. And I think this is going to be, uh, after we get through here in the next uh, 15 minutes, an extension of that tornado warning. Who would be next in line? We're going to watch Effingham County. We're going to watch the eastern part of Shelby County, maybe southern Moultrie County, perhaps Coles in Cumberland County as well. We'll have to see how things progress here. But one thing we do want to mention is when we talk about tornado warnings, here's some things that we can do and talk about. What do you do? Where do you go? Uh, it's springtime. A lot of us have a severe weather plan. Some of us may be new to the area, and we're hearing, hey, the tornado warning's going on. Um, what's going on with that? First off, uh, if you're under a tornado warning, proceed to a safe place. A lot of times when I'm in schools, uh, I talk about in, down, up. Talk about that with the kids. You go inside, most interior room. We go to the lowest level that we can, whether that's a basement, whether that's a crawl space, something of that, and we cover up as much as we can as well. Blankets, a mattress, uh, make a pillow for it for the kids in the bathtub if you don't have a basement. That's a great thing to do. The other thing about that is I always tell kids, hey, grab a bike helmet. Some people say, well, they're not going for a bike ride. You know, we've got to protect our heads with those bike helmets. And so that's something else that you can do is if you get a tornado warning, uh, you get in, down, up. That bike helmet helps protect your brain. That's pretty important there. Where do you go? Some of us live in mobile homes. It's a great uh, place for 360 days out of the year, but the five days there's severe weather is not the best place to be here. Uh, first off, we advise no driving in severe weather like tornado warnings. Uh, if you're driving, you certainly do not want to stop under a highway overpass. Even if there's hail, that tornado could be coming up behind you. Keep moving. Get to the nearest sturdy structure, the nearest exit if you're on the interstate, a uh, gas station, a restaurant, someplace like that. That's a place to go for that. Uh, the other thing, too, is some folks uh, might be shopping. It's Thursday night, getting ready for the weekend here. They're out doing some errands. If you're in a, a big box store, a grocery store with a large open span, those are not the place to be here. The place you want to be is in a sturdy location, uh, interior room or a basement of a well-built building, a site-built structure. 
no manufactured homes, no mobile homes, no large open span roofs here. Um, that interior room is going to be the place to go. And some of you also may have a tornado shelter or a safe room. You got a basement. Those also going to be the place that uh, we want to send you and uh, want you to go if that tornado warning is issued. I do want to talk now. Again, that tornado warning is in effect for Shelby County. And the National Weather Service is going to have to make a decision here. That will determine what we do if there is a um, extension. This is going to be for eastern Shelby, far southern Moultrie, parts of Coles and Cumberland County. Kind of thinking ahead here, who's next in line. Uh, you got some time there. Hey, those storms are coming. Even if maybe the tornado warning isn't extended, a lot of strong wind coming with this year. So maybe get out of your mobile home, head to a sturdy shelter, call your cousin, your uncle, your your friend, and say, hey, I'm coming over. Uh, maybe your parents or your kids, whatever the case is. Head on over there. You got some time if you're well ahead of the storm here. And uh, make sure your phone's charged as well, because we are streaming on our digital platforms, Facebook, Twitter. We are on uh, our app as well. And that is uh, a place where you can get that live coverage stream. Maybe your TV's in the living room and your shelter's in the other side of the house or downstairs. You don't have a TV there. The app, we're streaming. You can jump on Facebook right now and watch the severe weather coverage. Uh, flashlight's good. Maybe the lights go out. You got something. And uh, keep up to date with your WCI3 weather app. For some of you, this might be the first event. You don't have your safe place ready. You haven't had it ready. You know, we haven't had anything going on much in my neck of the woods. Well, this is a time for you to make sure your safe place is uh, all ready to roll and all uh, cleaned out. No cobwebs, no spider webs, nothing like that. Clean it out uh, so that way it's it's uh, safe to go here. Taking a look here, check uh, checking in with what's going on. Um, and I get it. Some folks might be a little unhappy with uh, us cutting in. I don't really care. We got severe weather. We care about all of our viewers. And uh, we're going to keep that coverage going here. We will figure out the programming later. But at this point, the call to action, given what we have already seen in central Illinois, is with these tornado warnings, a, a rather serious situation that uh, still is unfolding with uh, some life-threatening weather. And so for our viewers, we are here to inform them and keep them updated. And uh, this right here, this image, when I pop this up, it tells us why. We've had storms like this coming on through. That is a tornado that touched down in McCoupin County and is a part of these storms now moving through Shelby County and Fayette County, heading towards Effingham, Coles, Cumberland County. And uh, so as long as we've had situations like this, we'll continue to, to be on the air in that. Uh, and uh, you can plan all you want. I don't care. It's not going to change anything here. Let's talk here about uh, our... Storms now, we're going to go north to south and keep an eye on things here. I do want to talk here, continue to watch this line of storms now west of Decatur. It's getting closer to the county line, Macon County line, DeWitt County line. That severe thunderstorm warning, mainly for straight line winds. I kind of see a little backward C shape here. And we might see some more intense winds along the north of I-72, far northern, northeastern Sangamon, northwestern Macon, and southern Logan counties. Um, that's where this is going to be continuing off to the east. That might be the best chance for that. And we'll kind of zoom in a little bit, check out some of the spots here. Uh, Iliopolis, Harristown, Warrensburg. Um, you've got Niantic that sits right here. That's probably the best chance for some strong wind, even up towards Latham. But certainly that whole line is capable of that. And I'll bring back that camera in Decatur, I think the Effingham camera is set. Let me just switch to the Decatur. There's the Decatur camera. We're going to keep an eye on that. We're starting to see that shelf cloud off in the distance. It's a little hard to see. Maybe you can go ahead and bring Max uh, to full for us so we can look at that. Still a little ways away, but um, that's uh, what we're going to watch. Just checking my messages here real quick. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to watch and see how that plays out here. Okay, Seth is uh, moving to the east. I've got a text from him. He's going to continue continue moving. We don't have any service from him at this point, but uh, we're going to watch, uh, keep an eye on him. Um, and he's 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 talking to us. So we know he's out there. We just don't see his camera feed because he's in a, a rural rural part of the world down there in parts of southern Shelby, northern Fayette, uh, into northwestern Effingham County. Before long, we'll probably hear from him. Um, as we continue to watch. All right, Kevin's just sent me a message as well. He's saying that wind threat's picking up up there. I, I agree. I, I tend to see that backward C shape. Look at that. Um, that's some strong wind there. That's some really intense wind, that, that uh, real strong wind. In fact, let me just do a little uh, query of what we think is going on here. Um, hey, we're thinking some. there could be some 70-mile-an-hour wind gusts not far above the surface with that. Um, the warning's just for 60 mile per hour winds, but I have a feeling that seeing that wind as strong as it is here, that's a concern where we've got perhaps some 70 mile per hour winds. And I tell you what, <laughs> I hate to say it this way. Go ahead and bring me back full on screen here. I hate to say it this way, but 
maybe the tornado potential is trying to come up a little bit with this line coming into Macon County here. There's these little notches. So I'm, I'm asking the National Weather Service, but that's some nasty wind. 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts, not out of the question with these storms as they continue off to the east. So this may be a concern. I'm going to give an early heads up, Macon County. Man, I was hoping we were going to miss that, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to be the case. At a minimum, some strong wind coming for you. The time now is 719. And... Uh, See, this may be up to looking at that. That's gonna be maybe some 75 mile an hour wind gusts coming in through there, uh, near Niantic, Latham, Warrensburg, Decatur, and uh, from Mount Pulaski. So that's gonna be a concern for us. That's that's uh, that's probably gonna produce some problems. I think a newsroom in the back soon, probably gonna get a little active from this. This is gonna continue the east, it's gonna come through Decatur, then it's gonna hit Pyatt County, then it's gonna continue to to Champaign County. So that's uh, um. A concern here that, that uh, okay, so we got a lot of things going on here now. Let's jump back to the southern storms where the tornado warnings are, but I do not want to forget about those northern storms at all. Uh, National Weather is analyzing things, they're looking at that, but I think they got the same thought that maybe we're not out of the woods with those northern storms um, being the case. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. So uh, I take back what I said earlier Decatur, Monticello, Champaign, Tuscola. If you're in those areas, we're gonna have to watch you. And if you know some of those areas, um, That's going to be something we watch. So uh, they're saying some wind reaching down to the ground. They've just extended. Um, they're, they're, they're watching that. Um, so that's going to be something we keep an eye on there. They are looking at that wind. Man, that is some strong wind coming into Western Macon County here. Latham, Warrensburg, I think you're about to get thumped with some intense wind. Uh, Harristown, Niantic, same for you, folks that live in between there. This is gonna carry into the northern part of Decatur. Uh, starting to grow concerned about the potential for some significant wind in Decatur uh, with some wind gusts 60 mile an hour plus, could be up to 75, the way things are looking on radar here. And uh, these little kinks in the line just make me a little nervous looking at that. So that's something that we're gonna watch. We're not far here, we're at the county line. It's not a, that far out from Harristown. Uh, Warrensburg, Forsyth, Oriana, Argenta, all something to, to think about with the strong wind heading in your direction. So that certainly is going to be a concern for us here as it continues to move off to the east. Let's get an update further down to our storm that is tornado warned, thinking that there may be some rotation still evident in the Cowden area right in here. See where those reds and greens come together? Some broad circulation still in place across south central Shelby County. That'll be uh, south of Tower Hill by about five, six miles. They cross in 128 near Cowden. At this point, Cowden, you got to take shelter here. The National Weather Service has gone ahead and extended the warning to the east to include the rest of Shelby County and all of Effingham County. But instead of a tornado warning, they have gone ahead and issued a severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag. And so what that means is we're going to have some really intense wind uh, with those storms. The tornado potential is there. They're just not certain that maybe it's going to continue off to these. We're going to have to watch how storms evolve. But certainly we're not going to let our guard down. And that can change in a moment's notice for us here. And uh, so that's what we're going to keep an eye on. Um, we kind of got that northern storm there that's been the, the storm of the day, it seems like, with other issues further to the south along that line. And then we've got this uh, issue as well further to the north coming into um, – all right, uh, Latham. I'm going to give Latham. If you know someone in Latham, give them a give a quick text. Tell them, hey, um, I need folks in Latham to consider this to be a. Um, let me zoom in here. Okay, I think we got an evolving situation for Latham. Um, real strong wind. If anyone in news is in the building, if we can let them know, pretty soon we're going to want to call into Logan County and get a report on Latham. Uh, we're watching some really intense wind coming into Latham here. This is where Latham is. Uh, that's some intense wind. And let me check the messages, see the, the wind gusts in there, a lot of 70 plus mile an hour indications popping up in that. Uh, that is intense wind, not far up at the surface. We're very close to the Doppler radar here and it is surging ahead this may mean the tornado potential is going to come up a little bit in Macon County. This keeps doing everything it needs to uh, in the right direction for that to be the case. So we're going to watch and see this is probably going to get an extension, at least of your thunderstorm warning, no doubt. But will they think about a tornado warning on this? That remains to be seen. Um, they're still uh, keeping an eye on it. Um, but boy, there's a lot of wind there in Latham. And I think that means we're going to um, keep an eye on things. Um, Getting some other messages in here. Um, 
just checking some of these reports coming in, some of the wind from Springfield, some of those photos coming in. Uh, that certainly is going to be a concern. But man, I'm, I'm I got some real growing concern for Northern Macon County, and that to me is going to carry it into Piatt County and Champaign County, um, which will be a problem for us here. So we're going to be watching these storms very closely. If we can, I need to take care of a few things behind the scenes. I'd like to go. Uh, Seth is on. Nope. He's kind of in and out. Can we bring Seth's feet up and let's see if we can hear him at all. Um, I'd like to, to try and get him and see where he's at on there. Seth, uh, we're keeping an eye on your storm as well. We got some other problems to the north. Where are you at? What you seeing? Yeah, thanks, Jacob. Um, right now, I am trying to make my way into Effingham County. I'm just kind of trying to get out of this mess that I've been in for quite some time. I think I'm still technically in far eastern Fayette County. I'm just kind of still running away from that storm that I was kind of watching outside Ramsey earlier. And I'm telling you what, Jacob, there for a little bit, it was it was probably sideways rain so much of it i was just hopeful that i could maybe uh, kind of see where i was going there it was uh it was definitely some tougher conditions inside that line thankfully i've escaped it since it was a little dicey there for just a moment but i'm in far eastern uh fayette county not 100 percent sure what road i'm on but trying to make my way out there to uh western effingham county right now jacob Okay, hey, thanks, Seth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say a tornado likely developing over Latham. Tornado likely developing over Latham, based on what I'm seeing here. Um, it is really impressive circulation now over Latham. I think we will have uh, a potential for a tornado very much over Latham. See where my green is wrapping around here, that rain coming around. Uh, this will be near and now moving just to the east of the Latham. Uh, boy, that's about as impressive as it's looked here. And when we go to the reflectivity, um, you can see here, see this little hook popping up? That there is what we look, there's your tornado warning now. Logan and Macon counties, Logan and Macon counties here. Uh, tornado warning now in effect for that circulation based on radar. We've got that uh, now concern for Warrensburg, Forsyth, Moroa, Argenta, Oriana. This does not include anyone indicator south of Interstate 72. This does not include Harristown. It does not include places to the south towards Macon, Long Creek, uh, Mount Zion. This is going to be the northern part of the county. It's going right through the wind farm, which is the worst part. But I think we may have uh, either have or about to have uh, a tornado in Latham. And I tell you what, um, someone in news, if we need to, a real concern for Latham here. Wow. Um, Okay, new tornado warning there for for Logan and Macon County. I, I'm, I'm real shocked to see this, folks. Uh, this is not a good situation for northern Macon County uh, as we've got uh, really intense winds here now coming in with that latest scan that's hopping on and through. So let me um, make sure I get this message out to the National Weather Service. Uh, we've got a likely tornado near Latham now moving to the east. A uh, very volatile situation. I'm going to get that Decatur camera up. It's been giving me a little problem, um, but this should keep it north of the city of Decatur. I bet the sirens are sounding in Decatur now. So we've got uh, for Macon County now, tornado warning in effect, and that's going to go for the next 30 to 45 minutes. If I can, maybe I can get my control of my camera back here. Um, there may have been, let me get that, that camera. There we go. Finally got it back. We're going to take that and try and zoom in and do a little bit of look in there. If we can, let's bring Max to full while we're looking at this storm and to try and get a vantage point. You're going to see me moving it around and see if we can't spot something that is down. It's still a little far away. We're kind of looking off in the wind farm area, um, but visibility isn't great. But man, that's about as strong of a signature for a tornado as I have seen yet today in Macon County. And let's see if I can get the, the autofocus taken care of. Um, let's see here, trying to update that. We may, real close, can't tell if um, we've got trees. Okay, so a report just came in from Riverton, numerous trees blown down from Riverton to the east from this storm. It is so hard to see looking there to the north and west of Decatur towards the Latham area if something has happened. And uh, just the visibility is not great for us, but uh, we're now keeping an eye on that. Uh, it is very ominous, dark gray, kind of zooming out a little bit. The, the radar signature to me though, 
has said, yeah, that's if that's not a tornado, that is some intense wind coming through northern Macon County here at this point, uh, based on what we're seeing. So uh, the call to action now, northern Macon County, head to your shelters. I uh, don't want to forget about our folks down to the south. We're keeping an eye on eastern Shelby County, mainly a wind threat for Shelby County, Effingham County. The line of storms now coming into the western part of Effingham County. Now, I'll bring that Effingham camera up as well and uh, keep an eye on it. And then I need to make sure we've got um, some information coming in uh, in Latham. There's the Effingham camera. You can see that lightning off to the west as that storm now is getting close to Altamont, uh, coming up 70 there. And there may still be some areas of weak rotation in there, but it doesn't look as strong as it did earlier. But boy, this signature now to the north of Warrensburg. And our camera's probably probably going to have a hard time getting a view of that from uh, Decatur. So that's the Effingham camera. Let's bounce back to the Decatur camera. If we can in the back, I'm going to route the Decatur camera into the uh, Weather Metrics 3 one. And I'd like to probably have some sort of double box where we can we can have that coverage uh, with maybe Seth and the Storm Tracker if we get them or, or, or even a triple box. I really want to keep an eye on this storm with the rotation coming out of the Latham area and see if we can't spot anything. Um, it is low and gray. The contrast is not great on the camera indicator. Let me bring that back up for you so y'all can peek at it as well. And uh, we'll put that camera in two. And that way I can control that. Uh, this tornado now would be about two miles north of Warrensburg, about three and a half miles east of Latham. So there is, um, the sirens are sounding in Macon County. That's a good thing. It's mainly for the storm to the north there. Um, and so the left image is looking at Macon. We've got on the right, Seth down in Effingham County. We've got our view to the sky and all over. And if you happen to have any reports or views, uh, please let us know now a serious situation unfolding in Macon County, based on what I'm looking on the radar, if there has not been a tornado, and man, that's about as close as you can get. There are certainly some really intense winds coming through the northern part of uh, Macon, of, uh, Macon County right now, north of Warrensburg. This will pass uh, about uh, halfway between Moroa and Forsyth, if not slightly closer to Forsyth. Moroa, I'd like you to shelter. Forsyth, I'd like you to shelter. Also, Argenta and Oriana, I'd like you to shelter as well from the storm as it continues to move off to the east. Uh, so kind of struggling with that view there in our Decatur camera, but uh, certainly that's something that we'll want to watch and uh, keep a very close eye on. Let's go ahead and reset here. It is 7.30 right now. Uh, we continue to bring you severe weather coverage. I'm Jacob Dickey in the Weather Center. We've got Seth out in the field. Kevin's helping out on the digital side of things. And so go ahead and bring me on screen, please, so we can talk through what we're looking at. Um, we've got our map showing up. If we can, there we go. I'd like to be full so we can talk uh, area-wide of what's going on. Um, and uh, so just bring camera one full, please. Please bring, there we go, thank you. Uh, I'd like to talk about what's going on with these storms right now. We've got our storms to the south. Uh, the tornado warning no longer in effect for Shelby and Fayette counties. Uh, we have severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag for, sh for eastern Shelby and all of Effingham County. That storm has some wind, likely some 60 mile per hour winds gusts. The chance is there for a tornado, but we give it a tornado possible tag because the rotation, while weak, still could pick up a little bit. And so that's the concern. Uh, the, the, the focus, while we are down there watching, the new focus is now on these new storms, which have taken over in Macon County and have tapped into some instability, taken advantage, uh, perfect you know, step by step to make everything happen. We've got this tornado warning out for northern Macon County. At this point, Logan County. From the tornado potential, I'll give you it all clear, but if you're watching a Mount Pulaski or towards Latham, I think you're probably still getting some wind and hail, but the tornado threat is to the east. This now is going to be just north of Warrensburg, and uh, you can see right here, see this bulge in the line? This is our velocity. That is where our circulation is located. Going to be uh, coming into the north side of Forsyth, uh, north of 51 by a mile or two, and uh, so we're going to watch that storm pretty closely as we continue to have this situation unfold. And I need to turn the camera a little bit further to the north now just to keep my eyes ahead of it. One thing I think is happening, is I don't think we're actually going to get a view of it from our vantage point because it's kind of wrapped up in there. Um, we've got a report of a tree blown down in Latham from Logan County EMA. A tree blown down in Latham from at least some wind. I don't have much more information than that. Um, that certainly is something that we're continuing to watch here, but that is the latest that we've got. And that's because of the strong wind coming out through Warrensburg is getting strong wind. Next in line, even if the tornado potential doesn't materialize for you, Moroa, Forsyth, down to Decatur, even you will be getting some of that wind in place. And uh, so that's uh, where we're going to watch and keep an eye on things for here the next little bit. 
kind of zoom out a little bit and I'll bring you that camera shot back up from Decatur. And we'll check some of the other cameras here in a bit, but this is our closest camera to our active tornado warning. Now, the area of circulation is going to be just north of the Love's truck stop there on the northwest side of Decatur by about four miles or so, about due north of there. And uh, that's kind of off in this direction. And it's really hard to see. We're losing light, we're not getting much help from that. Hard to see if we're getting any help from lightning um, either, but I think if there's something, it's going to be right in here. And so that's going to be where we keep our eyes on things. Um, from my vantage point, it's kind of messy and soupy, but man, that storm is surging out. Going to bring a lot of wind. And I'm kind of looking closer in here as well to uh, keep an eye on it. It does look a little darker back there, but I'm not able to discern any sort of... Um, any sort of actual tornado or rotation from a vantage point. And I just don't think we're in a good spot. Our camera sits in downtown looking off to the north and west. I don't think we're in a good spot to actually be able to see this because that rain and wind is wrapping around there. Uh, but somebody that's in Moreau and Forsyth going to be having that storm coming in on their doorstep here before long. That's probably where we are, are looking at here. So um, kind of looking at things. We've got uh, 735. The tornado warning now for Macon County continues. This is our storm moving off to the east. Pretty quick now, picking up a little bit. We still think that uh, there is perhaps some strong wind potential with this. Even if uh, that tornado is in a local spot, a lot more folks will get the strong straight line winds that are coming on with this storm as it moves off to the east. And that's going to carry it into Pyatt, DeWitt, and uh, the rest of Macon County from Decatur here, you can see we've extended that severe thunderstorm warning into Pyatt County, Southern DeWitt County, and Northern Macon County. And that's mainly for some 60 to 70 mile per hour straight line winds. Uh, the tornado threat, little notch in there where we have to watch. And if that continues on the path, it'll come through Monticello probably in about 45 minutes from now. It should be into Champaign County within an hour. And uh, so that's something that we'll keep an eye on, that area of rotation. You can see this little notch here. There it is. This is where our tornado would be now. It'd be northwest of Forsyth by about three miles, probably split the middle between Moreau and Forsyth um, by about halfway between the middle. And uh, that is certainly something that we will watch. Our cameras here, this is where our cameras in downtown Decatur. So when we look, we're kind of looking at all of this. We're not able to effectively see what's in place here. But if this continues off to the east, maybe our, our champagne camera will be able to pick something up as well from that. Let me do a reset real quick. I just want to make sure I got eyes everywhere because I don't trust nothing right now with uh, the way these storms are moving on through. Um, once this line comes through, I think we're going to be finished with the severe weather threat. Uh, so Christian County, Montgomery, Macoupin County, Sangamon County, Menard County, Logan County, all clear for the rest of the night for severe weather threat. You are good. Probably the next uh, 30 minutes, we'll add Shelby to it to Macon County as these storms move off to these, which is some good news for us here as we continue to have this. Um, one thing to mention is with these warnings, if there's an extension of this tornado warning, look where it's heading. It'll be heading right down 72 towards Monticello. So an early heads up, anyone in central Pyatt County, uh, and even if it's not the tornado warning, the strong straight line winds to me stand out as well. Um, that is going to be a concern for us uh, where, you know, D-Land, Monticello, Bemet, Cerro Gordo, all the way down to US 36 could likely see some strong straight line winds from the 60 to 70 miles per hour as this warning continues. The warning itself, and just double checking here, the warning itself for um, Macon and Pyatt is for 70 mile per hour winds. So they're seeing some of that strong wind in there as well. Looks like at this point, our tornadic circulation now is going to be just in the northwest side of Forsyth. So here we are, Forsyth, uh, Route 51 to the north. It is crossing 51 now uh, at this time. If we could, I'd like to double box the Decatur camera and myself, and that way we can kind of keep an eye on it. We're getting a much different view now that the shelf cloud has rolled over us here. And uh, there we go. And uh, let's see if I can get that uh, image to be a little straight for you there. Um, that rotation now just north of Forsyth. And uh, we'll be able to see if something's happening for all of a sudden. Then that camera shot, uh, let's see, that is there. Is that camera shot flush left by chance? I'm trying to get a bearing on my camera to see where I need to look. If we can, can we put the very center of that camera shot in the middle so I can zoom in uh, and show that shot the best there? That would help out, I think, a little bit uh, if you center that so I can take a peek as uh, what may be a potential for a uh, tornado moving through just north of Forsyth at this point. And what we're looking for here is to see if we see any sort of power flashes or any sort of uh, electrical infrastructure. They're going to reset that for me. I appreciate that. Um, I just put that shot where I want it. So when you get that set, you kind of see the lights in the middle there. As we look north of town, we'll see if something can't materialize from that. Um, 
And uh, so we're going to watch uh, very closely that shot there. This is a rotation, pretty impressive. Look at that intense wind wrapping in here. Some wind pulling in in the front, which is that circulation. Uh, does look suspicious uh, for Forsyth, north of 72. If you're south of I-72 Decatur, your sirens may have gone off. Uh, you are clear in the city of Decatur, south of 72. But if you're north of 72 into Forsyth and... Um, Forsyth and uh, places like that, that is something that we need to watch. Okay, I need to reset back to the south. Now we've got a new tornado warning now just issued for parts of Effingham County. So let's widen back out here and take a view. We've got a tornado warning for Macon County with our northern storm. We've got a new tornado warning now for Effingham County. And uh, we're going to spend a little time down here with that. This is for some rotation that's popping up near Mason and Watson and uh, continuing off to the east. That will include the city of Effingham. It will include uh, it'll include Diederich. Um, it will include Teutopolis. It's going to include the uh, rural parts of southeastern Effingham County. And um, keep an eye on that scene with the National Weather Service. we got two storms to watch now with the tornado potential here in Effingham County. Let's see if we can check back in with Seth. I'd like to hear from Seth C. where he's at. Um, so if that's possible at all. Seth, where are you at and what are you seeing? Jacob, I'm currently northwest of Effingham. I am on East 1600th Avenue. I'm about to pass into town from the northwest side. I'll tell you what, Jacob, it was a battle there for a little bit. When you lost me the first time when I was in Ramsey just getting out, that line caught up to me. And I'll tell you what, it was super hard to see there for a long time. Got to have that sideways rain, super heavy rain. I am very glad to be back here in civilization because some of those roads out there definitely looks like they were capable of flooding over for just a little while. Just some pretty intense rain. I think I'm behind the strongest gusts. I think the gusts outran me. But I think my next move now, just saw the new tornado warning for Effingham, uh, for Effingham County. Jacob, I, I think I'm going to head back to, uh, home towards Dieter and see what I can see down in the area that I'm super familiar with. Yeah, uh, you might end up in your, your home stomping grounds there uh, where you're at. Uh, uh, if we can as well, I'd like to uh, potentially triple box this if possible. I'm going to stick the Effingham camera in. I do want to keep in that. we got to watch both our Decatur camera and our Effingham camera um, at this point. Uh, so you can see that rotation. Effingham County looks like from Effingham southwards. And, and we're kind of in an area where it's hard to see. So I'm actually going to switch to the Evansville radar and see if we can get a little better picture of where some circulation might be. Um, you kind of see in right here, Watson, perhaps over you, uh, but I can't rule out southwest of Effingham there and down 45 where that 20 warning has been extended. And that's going to carry east into um, parts of, let's see, that's going to be um, parts of Jasper County until, give me the information here going to be until 8.15 with that. And they're saying both severe thunderstorms with the potential for tornado and extensive straight line wind damage from Hartville to Mason moving to the east at 50. So it is accelerating here. Let me pop up the sky cam. We've got the Decatur camera first. We're watching both storms. That wind coming on through. We can still see some of the lights off in the distance there, but I do want to bring that Effingham camera on as well. And that's going to give us another vantage point as we look further to the south and west here. Um, hard to see at this point. Can we bring Max to full by chance for me if that's possible? Just because it's so hard to uh, see with the studio lights in here. That'll give us the best view of that. Uh, some lightning coming on through. We're looking down to the south and west of town. And uh, I'll need to turn that camera a little bit more, in fact, as we, we watch this storm here. The uh, tornado warning is going to continue for both Effingham and Macon counties from two separate storms here for the next bit. Uh, we do not have much concern for hail at this point. There may be some hail embedded in there. I think the bigger concern is going to be for the wind potential. So even if you do not get the tornado potential, the wind will likely be pretty wicked for some of us there. And that lighting is starting to pick up there as well as we look to the south of Effingham. So certainly keeping an eye on that. And I would say the lightning seems to be picking up in, in intensity as well in that storm. So that's a sign that the storm is strengthening across the southern two-thirds of Effingham County. And that's what we're going to continue to watch here. Seth is kind of maneuvering his way back. He's going to do what he can, but we may send him on some storm damage before long if that's what plays out as we continue to watch these storms as they continue off to the east. So um, I think we're going to deal with some things where maybe we're going to have some power outages. Let me get some numbers and power outages as well here. Kind of look at that. And uh, we'll see if we can't get some information um, from that. National Weather Service saying, hey, they're watching other storms too. So this is how it's going to be tonight, folks. we got to keep an eye on these storms. There's lots of us in the threat for severe weather. 
Uh, as far as power outage numbers goes, I do have some outages. Sangamon County, 1,200 customers out, about 400 customers in Shelby County, and then more customers down towards Bond and Madison County in the St. Louis metro from these storms that have moved on through. So we have had some power outages as well. Remember, a great way for you to have some power outages. If you've got that case, you've got the WCI3 weather app downloaded, you are good to go. I would like to as well talk real quick while I've got some of you here about Weather Call. It's a new service we've had. I'll briefly put it on the screen. If you're at home and you're thinking, I would love to get a phone call when a tornado warning is issued, anyone in Macon County would have gotten a phone call with Weather Call saying, hey, rotating storm coming towards you, uh, whether it's in the middle of the night, early in the morning, the afternoon, whatever the case is, your home location, you can program that in and get it. To, it's also able to be programmed for, um, you can take that with you. And you can use it if you've got an RV, you like to road trip. That's a service you can have, wci.com slash weather call. It is $12 a year, a small fee there just to help keep up with the phone calls. You know, nothing, nothing uh, we want to keep that service going, so that small fee is going to be an option there for you. And that might not be for everyone. You probably got the WCI3 weather app downloaded as well. That's another way where you can take it with you on the go. So whether you've got a landline you're on the go with a cell phone. Those are all things to keep in mind for us here. Time now is 7.45. Let's go ahead and reset here in the studio. Uh, I'm Jacob Dickey. We've got Seth in the field. Kevin's running digital for us tonight. And uh, if we can bring my camera shot up, please, to reset on camera one. Um, what we are looking at is severe weather moving through the area. We've got wind and tornadoes. Uh, then moving on through so far had some damage reports a lot of tree damage coming in from Sangamon County in the Riverton area also it sounds like we've had a little bit of damage in the Latham area don't know much of the extent of that there's been some wind damage due to power outages as well in parts of Shelby County so we're seeing a little bit of everything here and uh, I was really hoping it was looking good for a while and I-72 and I think I put my foot in my mouth because now we've got that tornado warning in northeastern Macon County as well as in southern Effingham County that we're watching so we're going to bounce back between two storms down there to the south Seth is in Effingham County. It looks like he's coming to the northwest side, so we'll check in with him shortly. I do want to talk more about this storm in Macon County, the tornado warning that continues. The National Weather Service saying they are still seeing strong rotation, and we agree with that, uh, in the area to the west of Argenta and Oriana, and that's where we need to watch now. U.S. 51 to the west in Macon County, I can give you an all clear. U.S. 51 to the east towards I-72 corridor, northeast of Decatur, that's where we are watching. That's going to be Argenta, Oriana, still Forsyth, east of town for now, uh, east of Moroa for now, and uh, eventually we're going to have to watch in Pyatt County for Cisco and Monticello would be the next in line for this storm. You can see the surge coming out here of wind, likely going to be some strong straight line winds coming in for Monticello and Bement in about 30 minutes, Saragoda in about 15 minutes, Cisco 15 minutes, uh, d -Land Weldon, you'd be included in that, and that will carry it eventually past Pyatt County into southern Macon, uh, Southern Champaign County as it moves out of Macon County here for uh, the next little bit. The rotation, we can still see it clear as day here. Look at all that strong wind pushing here on the backside. Oriana likely getting thumped with some 70 mile an hour winds, if not stronger than that. Argenta also in the path of some of that strong wind a few minutes away for you. That tornado threat right there between Argenta and Oriana, where we see strong winds and the potential for a tornado now as it moves off to the east. Foresight, you are clear. Decatur, you've been clear. Uh, Maroa, I'll give you the all clear from the tornado potential, probably still some storms with some wind potential as well. And I do want to check on our stream and just make sure if there's any reports as well, we are streaming on our digital platforms. You can go on to Facebook, you can go on to Twitter or X, you can go on to our app and uh, you can, can watch there. Let me take a look here at uh, some of the chat, see if anyone's got, uh, we've got power out on the interstate in Effingham. Um, some folks saying in Stewartson, the wind sounds like a train whistle. Uh, in Diederich, the power's flashed. We've got uh, lights flickering in Diederich there from that storm. And uh, wind in Decatur picking up some power flickering there as well. Not surprising that some of this wind is mixing on down. The severe thunderstorm warning itself is outside of that tornado warning. But that continues as we head into uh, Pyatt County, southeastern DeWitt County, northeastern Macon County with the situation going. And that eventually may get into Pyatt and Champaign County here with that potential before long. So we're going to watch that. Let's kind of talk about some of the other storms here. First off, Matt Toon Charleston. Haven't had much to report for you. If we talk about you. Then we're concerned about you. If you haven't heard your town, generally that means we're not too concerned about you. And that's been the case for Matt Toon Charles at this point. That may change, though, in the next little bit. Um, and uh, so we'll watch and keep an eye on some of the storms for the south there. Tuscola, 
probably some rain and thunder in the area. We'll see if there's any lightning popping up, some general thunderstorms, and that extent will extend towards Edgar County and Vermilion County here. But uh, the immediate concern, it seems to be Mattoon Charleston to the south and west. Let me go ahead and as well, um, while we've got this here, the storm in Effingham is right over town. Uh, and so I'm going to pull up the Effingham camera as a tornado warning still in progress for Effingham. And I'm going to turn this back to the east a little bit uh, and kind of look, see what's going on. We're pan around there. We're at the hospital there in St. Anthony's. Uh, we'll kind of keep an eye on it. It looks windy and wet, rain, a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder with this. And uh, so that's going to be a problem for us where we've got uh, issues there. Getting some reports in Oriana that power is out in northeastern Macon County. That doesn't surprise me here. That's a heads up for Pyatt County. Uh, we've had confirmation of some wind causing power outages in Macon County. And uh, so Pyatt County is next. We've got uh, people saying their power is coming and going, and that may be the case beyond that for even into Champaign County, including here in Champaign-Urbana. And so that's something that we're going to watch. That's our Effingham camera. Let me go back to our Decatur camera, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, and then I'm going to check in with Seth in a minute because I see he's in downtown Effingham, it looks like. Uh, so Seth will be coming to you here in just a minute. In Decatur, kind of looking off in the distance. The storm's clearing through Decatur. It's, it's hard to make anything out there, uh, but uh, we're going to watch that, uh, continue to monitor things and uh, see if we get some reports. There seems to have been some power outages in the um, in the Oriana area, the Argenta area, and folks are saying even in Pyatt County, the power is flashing, coming and going. So that's something where um, we're going to keep an eye on here. Okay, let me uh, get the radar down to Effingham County real quick, just to look at that storm, and we'll talk about Sethi's in downtown Effingham. And uh, you can see, for the most part, he's not far behind the leading edge there. To me, Seth, um, one of those areas of rotation. It looks to be south of Diederich by about four or five miles near Lucas. Another one, maybe just northwest of Diederich on, on 33, where that construction zone is. Uh, Seth, can you tell us where you are and what you're seeing? Yeah, Jacob, so this turn I'm making right now, I'm heading on to Fayette. So Fayette is the main kind of east-west road here on the uh, east and southern side of Effingham. So that's where I'm at right now, just kind of seeing this uh, rain at the moment. Nothing crazy as far as wind. I think that is yet to come here, but uh, that's pretty much what I've been dealing with here for uh, quite some time now. It's just these strong, intense winds. And I agree with you, Jacob. I've got the radar on my uh, side over here, and it definitely looks like there's some rotation starting to uh, perk up a little bit here all across Effingham County. So any friends and family watching at home in Diederich or Montrose or even here in Effingham definitely want to uh, take shelter there. And, of course, uh, listen to Jacob because he's got better eyes on it uh, there on the radar than I do. I'm going to do my best here in Effingham just to kind of see things pass through. I'm not sure that I'm in a position anymore to outrun anything. So I'll just kind of be watching things from Effingham here. Probably just going to circle around a little bit, see if there's any power outages at any point in time. Probably just going to cut it here to the south part of town, Jacob. Kind of watch things move over and then maybe head back into town here and see uh, what kind of came of the aftermath of this thing moving through. But uh, heading now uh, south towards Route 33 in southern Effingham. Seth Bonoff and Storm Tracker. Jacob, over to you. Give me an anchor. Okay, thanks, Seth. Um, we're going to keep you close eye on you in Effingham down there with the storm coming on through. Um, we are getting some reports out of Macon County of um, some damage that has occurred in the town. I don't want to say some viewers are messaging and saying, hey, there's some damage up there. Um, so we're getting some reports from Latham uh, about the storm. And uh, so we're going to be reaching out to folks in Latham about this. That was where that storm spun up very quickly. Uh, that warning now is coming into the Argenta Oriana area and uh, is causing for some concern with that. Uh, just kind of looking here at some of those messages, um, getting reports there may have been some damage in Latham, and that is a concern for us uh, with these storms. So I'm going to get some news. I want to make sure news hears that. If we can get some calls to Logan County and Macon County to see uh, what is going on, that would be uh, helpful for us here. Okay, uh, we're going to reset. It is 7.53, and uh, we are still watching the storm coming out of the Macon County area. Um, and I'm just sending a message here. So uh, this is our look. We've got the Macon County storm. We've got Effingham County storm that are moving off to these. The severe thunderstorm warning continues into Pyatt County. Uh, there's likely going to be some problems where... Um, wow. Okay. So, uh, I just need someone from news in here, please grab someone from news. Tell them to come in here. I don't care what we do. Uh, if you can get someone from news in here, I need to relay some information, um, to them. And, um, 
I, I want to make sure that they're know so they can do some follow-up on things. We need to get a crew to Macon County, it sounds like, uh, based on what we're having there. So uh, that's what we've got. Um, I need someone from news to talk to me, please. Oh, okay, uh, if somebody in the back could call, if somebody in the back could call, I am on air right now. I would like to get, okay. Uh, let me do this. Let's talk to Seth real quick, and I'm going to make a call. Um, I need to talk to news. So let's go to Seth. Seth, can you tell us where you're at and what you're seeing? Yep, sure can, Jacob. I am now on the uh, south side of Effingham. I'm about to uh, pass by the uh, the rec center here, also now the uh, Village Mall here in town. Uh, just kind of looking at things here from the southern end of town. I also uh, do have an aunt and uncle that live over here, just kind of looking uh, through things to see if there's anything that had passed through Effingham. I, I, based on radar, it, it does not appear anything uh, kind of particularly dangerous has passed through Effingham, just kind of more so this uh, heavy rain, maybe strong winds at time. The areas of interest are still kind of in the southeastern portions of uh, Effingham County, again, kind of closer there to uh, where I live out there in Diedrich. But uh, that's where I am here at the moment, just kind of outside the uh, Village Square Mall, just kind of taking a look around here to see if there's any sort of power. Uh, it looks like power is still going on fine here in town. There was a four-way stop I was just at that had the uh, red lights uh, constantly blinking to indicate it was a four-way stop now. Of course, you see that when there's power outages, but I, I, I don't think that's a problem here right now. That may have been just a thing that uh, still left over from earlier if maybe the power had gone out there at some point. So I'm, I'm not seeing anything uh, particularly uh, concerning here inside Effingham at the moment. Again, I'm just kind of making a few laps around town here just to see what's been done because I, I think I'm past that window of outrunning the storm to the east. I kind of just have to sit here and let it kind of move over. But at this point, uh, Jacob kind of just looking over things, trying to see uh, where there was any damage, if there was, and kind of just be the uh, eyes here on the ground in the uh, far southern part of the area. So I'm going to kind of continue to circulate around town here, try my best to continue to keep good signal too, because if I go too far south, I know a uh, signal is a uh, very uh, hit or miss down that direction. So you know, on the uh, southern side of Effingham here right now, Jacob, we're going to uh, go ahead and send things back into the studio with you. All right. Thanks so much there, Seth. Uh, we appreciate your reports down in Effingham County, getting reports down in your hometown that some power outages are happening down there as our line of storms is moving on through. Uh, we're going to talk about that southern batch here, Coles County, Cumberland County, and Clark County. We've added a new severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible tag. The tornado warning continues for Effingham County, but we're close to giving Effingham County the all clear. And um, that is something that we are going to watch very closely here um, and uh, as the storm moves off to the east, we are expecting to see the potential for some strong straight line winds as we get into Cumberland, Southern Coles County. It does not include the city of Mattoon. It does not include the city of Charleston. You're kind of in the northern edge here, but we'll likely see some pockets of some 70 mile per hour winds very quickly uh, over the next 30 minutes from that move on through. That area of rotation is still a concern to the east of Watson, south and east of Effingham. And uh, that is moving into parts of Jasper County. So if you know some folks there, southeast of Diederich, there it is, the warning pulling away for the far eastern edge of the county. We'll give Effingham in five minutes and all clear, but right now this will be moving into Jasper County, into Newton, and uh, that's something that we have to watch very closely um, for in the next bit. So that's the southern storm. Let's bounce back to the northern storm. The severe thunderstorm warning continues for Piatt County, um, and Macon and DeWitt counties and is going to continue for a little while longer here based on uh, what we've got. I'm trying to tell what Seth's looking at there. I think he's driving into, it looks like he's maybe just kind of resetting where he's at there. So we'll keep, keep an eye on him. Um, what I've got is the storm coming out of uh, the Macon County. We may not have the tornado warning continue in Macon County for much longer. So if that's the case, we'll kind of evaluate at about 8, 805 what's going to happen here. Um, but uh, we've got to get to our news crews into Macon County after some of those Sears reports that are coming out of some damage that are there. And uh, so we will watch and, and listen, lean on them to get some of those reports. And of course, you as well, if you have any reports, uh, we will be looking for information on that. Um, in the middle here, Coles County, Northern Coles, Douglas County. We've got uh, not a whole lot happening here at this point. Some rain and general thunder kind of splitting the gap. And uh, seeing that happen, that might bode well for Edgar County. We're going to keep an eye on you. And then Champaign County. I think this line is going to be coming in your direction. And um, 
the next bit. And uh, so that is um, what we're going to have to watch is as this line continues, maybe the tornado threat comes down a little bit with eastern extent, but the strong wind threat still going to be there. I'm seeing a big surge of wind now between Cerro Gordo and Cisco. That's going to be heading for Monticello and Bement, likely some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds heading in that direction. And uh, on that general track, you think of uh, Ivesdale and Sedoris, maybe into South Champaign, Willard Airport. So we may follow those storms in based on what has happened with these storms as um, we continue to, to monitor things uh, uh, with this. So been an active night for us here. I'm Jacob Dickey. We've got Seth Bonoff in the storm tracker, and uh, we're going to keep an eye on all of this, kind of an evolving situation with how things are happening here. Uh, but it does seem like we've had some damage. And uh, just checking in with... Uh, Checking in, uh, we're getting reports of damage in both Warrensburg and in Latham here. Some of those concerning reports that are coming in our direction. Um, Kevin's finding some information out as well, and we are keeping our eyes and ears to the ground. So let's talk about who's, who's clear, who's not clear. Um, all clear, Springfield, Taylorville, Decatur, Clinton, Lincoln. We've got uh, Vandalia in the clear, Jacksonville. You're all in the clear here now. Let me bring back the regular radar. There are some light thunderstorms, uh, some, some showers coming on through, nothing of concern. Primarily now, I even am going to give the all clear for Shelby County and Effingham County for the severe potential. Those storms are now moving off to the east. This will be into Jasper County before long. We've got Cumberland and Coles County, and even into Moultrie County, uh, still some storms rumbling on through. And that's going to be a cause for concern with the storms uh, with wind potential moving off to the east. So heads up uh, for places like Greenup and Toledo, Mattoon, Charleston, perhaps just south of you, and uh, the southern part of the county, that warning continues, but there will likely be some thunder boomers in that area. And let me bring up a Charleston camera as well. So if we can bring the Charleston camera, I'll put that in max two. We bring that max two full. That'll give us a vantage point of what's going on down there. And uh, you can see there's Decatur. In a second, you'll see it pop up as Charleston. And when that happens, then this will be looking probably more to the north and west a little bit. And I'll get to turn that here. We'll probably see some lightning and thunder. Not quite to Charleston. The strongest winds do appear to be south of the Mattoon Charleston area. And uh, there's some lightning and thunder that's in place for us here in the Coles County area. We'll turn it more to the south and west. And you're going to see that lightning really pick up here with that particular storm. On the bottom right of your screen is Seth down in Effingham County. And he's going to check out and, uh, and see if he's got anything that happened down there. And uh, so we'll watch this as we've got some concerns for us as we move on through. Um, Karina is calling me here. And... Uh, so she's getting some information, perhaps. Uh, we'll find out some details from her. Um, but we're watching with some of those reports coming out from uh, um, the Macon County area of what may have been a tornado strike in Latham and in Warrensburg. Matthew and Charleston, you're going to get some storms. The wind, not a major concern at this point for areas north of Matthew and Charleston. Matthew and Charleston sits on the line. South of Mattoon, Charleston is definitely where more of that stronger wind is, uh, but we're going to keep an eye on that. Now, Cumberland County, let's talk about you. Haven't haven't talked a lot. It seems like there's going to be wind embedded in there, green up Toledo off to the west there on I-70, and then areas to the south of that is uh, going to be concerned with that tornado warning in Jasper County. We should be able to get this here in the next 30 minutes out of Cumberland County onto Edgar County. Then we pass these storms off to our affiliate in Terre Haute. Um, so that is... I mean, you see all these thunderstorm warnings lined up from there down to the south. Uh, and that's a concern for us. And then to the north, our tornado warning not in effect at this point. We're down to a severe thunderstorm warning in Pyatt counties. Strong wind coming in now about uh, three miles west of 105 between Monticello and Beement. I think that we're going to have uh, some strong 60 to 70 mile per hour winds move through the Monticello Beement areas before long. And we're going to keep our eyes on that because this may have been a uh, potential tornado producer earlier based on what we're seeing. As far as the winds to the south here, uh, that leading edge of wind is Neoga down to the south towards Montrose, moving off to the east. That's in Cumberland County, probably looking at 60, 65 mile an hour wind gusts based on what I'm seeing here. Uh, if we can, I'd like to check back in with Seth. I know Seth is out in the storm tracker, and um, we will be monitoring him. Um, Seth, are you seeing something? Mm -hmm. You got some power outages there? What's, what's going on? 
Yeah, Jacob, uh, this whole ride, I've been just kind of driving around. Seemed like most of town was fine until I got to the east side of town here, just past the uh, 97.9 XFM radio station. It is very dark out here. Even have the uh, Effingham Motel I got in a shot. No lights there. Uh, no lights at the car dealerships over here on this side of town. So to me, Jacob, it appears that the east side of Effingham is uh, certainly uh, missing electricity here at the moment. And kind of the perfect dividing line was uh, right there on uh, Willow Street here in town, or the road that ends up becoming 33 when you leave town to the south. Uh, that's kind of what I'm seeing here at the moment. So it looks like the west side of town's without power. I think I'm going to dive over to Chitopolis. That's where I was going to head here until I noticed things were pretty dark. So I'm going to kind of check on the scene over there in Chitopolis as well and kind of see uh, what may have gone on that direction that didn't happen there on the other side of town, Jacob. So uh, we're going to keep an eye on your feed and keep an eye on information that you are getting. Um, the other thing is we're getting some reports uh, from power outages down that way. So we're going to watch. I'm going to keep an eye on the Monticello storm now. Uh, there may be a slight uptick in rotation, potentially just east of Cisco, right on 72. Right in here kind of catches my attention in some details. If not, there's going to be strong wind. Somebody messaged me and said it sounded like a freight train with that wind coming on it. And uh, so that's going to be something where we've got some really intense wind coming through that area. And this storm likely produced a damaging tornado from what we're seeing in the Latham and Warrensburg area. Uh, my dad is out in Macon County and is going to have an update for me here shortly. He's having trouble getting up there. Um, and so that's a concern for what we've got going on um, with this storm. And so I want to keep our eyes on this coming into Monticello and Beamant. A lot of wind, going to be loud, a little bit of roar coming in with that wind perhaps, uh, but that's going to be um, what we continue to monitor. And if this continues, something that may be happening, kind of looking at radar, is it doesn't look as intense from a reflectivity standpoint now as it did earlier. Um, but we've got... Uh, the warm front that maybe was kind of down here, maybe outrunning that, but that may lessen the tornado potential that might instead mean the wind potential comes up. And uh, so that's uh, going to be what we have to watch into um, parts of Champaign and Piatt County. A lot of things going on right now. A lot of damage reports starting to come in. A lot of things like that that we have to continue to monitor. And so we're going to watch all of this very closely and uh, before long see how things evolve here. Um, the other thing is uh, kind of from a production standpoint, I think what may happen is if this storm trend continues, and I want to watch it with a very careful eye in the Monticello area. Let's say we get to a point where the storm weakens enough, then I think what we might do is be able to just bounce to digital coverage. That decision may come by 820 to 830. So we're going to go with this for another 15 minutes to watch this closely. Um, until I have the reports confirmed from Latham and Warrensburg, I don't want to say much on air, um, but uh, we've got uh, some damage in Mechanicsburg. We've got some damage in the Rochester, uh, I'm sorry, the Riverton area. Uh, we've got folks that are without power in um, parts of Pyatt and Macon counties. And so we're going to watch this very closely over the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, we've got Brandon Morano here. He's going to be making some phone calls for us about what may have happened in the Latham and Warrensburg areas from either what may have been a tornado or um, what may have been... Um, what may have been some intense 80 mile per hour winds based on reports here. Okay, we got the um, we've got the fire department saying in Clinton there are multiple power lines down in Clinton from this storm that has moved on through. Uh, Clinton was not really in the strongest winds from that. There's a lot of wind energy aloft. This low pressure is very close by. And uh, that they are hearing reports also from Latham and that Maroa are out of power. Um, and so we are continuing to watch closely to see how things evolve from there. Um, Kevin has let me know. He says that he got a report that, um, that a camper may have been flipped in the Warrensburg area from this storm as well. So that's certainly what we're going to watch uh, and keep a close eye on as we move on through with these storms. Still now, Macon County, DeWitt County, we're going to give you an all clear. I'm focused on central part of Pyatt County and now watching for Champaign County if this line continues to move to the east. I am hopeful that maybe this wind will come down. Maybe we are seeing this trend a little bit more elevated. The wind to me does not look quite as intense as it did earlier, kind of sampling some of it. We probably still have some 60 mile per hour winds coming in through Beamant and Monticello. Uh, that's a little bit better than what we had earlier with the storm, but uh, certainly we've got to watch and keep an eye on that. This storm not far away from the Monticello area now, 
uh, probably on the west exit there. The first exit, if you're coming east on 50, on uh, 72, I should say, that first exit coming to the east is uh, where that storm is now lining up. So next few minutes will be heading there. Let's go back to our southern batch of storms and keep an eye on that. Effingham County, all clear. Effingham County, all clear from you. We've got uh, Seth out there in the storm tracker. He's in the Effingham area and uh, continues to watch things for us. We'll go to him here in just a second as he's moving in the general direction. I think it looks like he might be coming towards, uh, let's see, what's that? Is that Teutopolis he's coming into? Uh, Seth, can you hear us? You're, you're in Teutopolis. Uh, what are you seeing there? And uh, have you had any reports of damage from your location? Yeah, thanks, Jacob. Uh, actually, lucky enough, as I was on my way to T-Town, I got our uh, pal Tyler Repking watching. He tells me that there is damage to a grain bin here on the east side of Teutopolis next to a uh, Schmidt's auction. That's kind of where I'm off to here right now. Going to see uh, what I can actually see out of that. From what I can tell, electricity is on here at Teutopolis. Interestingly enough, that the uh, east side of Effingham didn't have power, but the west side of T-Town here does. If uh, you've ever been around here to the uh, area, anyone who's been around here kind of knows that uh, Eastern Effingham kind of just seamlessly runs into uh, Western Teutopolis there. Uh, you kind of hard to tell uh, exactly when the transition happened. So east side of Effingham without power, west side of T-Town seems to be doing fine. But I did hear from Tyler Repking that there is a damaged grain here on the east side of town. So that's where I'm heading at the moment, Jacob. I'll uh, hopefully have a shot of that here in the coming minutes. But for now, I'll uh, send it back to you. All right. Thanks so much there, Seth. Uh, we'll keep an eye on what you are doing. And uh, we're getting a, some new information now where... Um, I'm going to kind of check in. I'm, I'm getting a text about Macon County here from um, some folks that are on the ground there. So stay with me for a second. So maybe we'll get some more information on that. It uh, looks like for the storms down there to the south, mainly a wind threat for Cumberland County. It'd be uh, coming from Green up Toledo off to the east towards Casey and southern Coles County. So it kind of looks more linear and more kind of blobular and, and it doesn't look quite as clean as it did earlier. So that's going to be a concern for us here as uh, the tornado threat has come down. Still, the wind threat is going to be there. You can see some of these broad pink areas from Neoga, Western Cumberland County, probably some uh, wind gusts that are in the 50 to 60 mile per hour wind range um, coming through that area now. And uh, so we're going to be keeping an eye. There could be a little rotation. If you see the orientation of the line here, more to the north and west, that surging out there can lead to maybe some brief circulation, but I have not seen that yet. And that's why we don't have a tornado warning for Cumberland County, but the tornado possible tag is in place there. And uh, so that certainly does mean that there could be something uh, that uh, is worth watching in those areas. So we've got that storm. Seth is moving. To me, it looks like there's some lights out down there. We'll come back to him in a second. I want to talk about Piatt County and how we are dealing with some of the wind coming into Monticello now. Looks like there'll be some strong winds in the south and west side of Monticello before all is said and done. This storm to me does look like it's maybe weakening a little bit, maybe trending a little more uh, off the surface. Um, but uh, there's still going to be wind mixing down. So that is uh, going to be watched. Okay, got some reports. Argenta is out of power. We've got um, checking the other information from the National Weather Service here that's just coming on in. Um, they are going to. Looks like uh, there's going to be a lot of winds. So that's basically what they're saying here is that there is going to be some wind with these storms as they proceed to the north. Uh, you look at all this up here, let's say McLean, Ford, Livingston, Iroquois um, counties, got to even Champaign and Vermilion counties. We're likely going to have a lot of wind in this area from those storms. Probably not going to reach severe, but it might be a noisy situation. And that's something that we can sometimes have is where we get these storms close to the low, and what happens is, is those storms can have this audible roar with them as uh, something to uh, you might hear. And it can sound pretty scary here, but at this point, I, I feel good that we're not seeing widespread significant wind in areas up there. And I think minute by minute, that threat is lessening for Piatt County, which would be good news for us in Champaign County. And so that's kind of what we're dealing with there. Okay, Seth is spinning his camera around. We'll keep an eye on him in the back. I do want to keep as well in the Coles and Cumberland County area. Uh, just keep an eye on the wind moving on through. It looks like he's kind of maneuvering around and things like that. Uh, do you have any new information for us while you're here? Wardsburg has uh, all their fire trucks are out. Come closer. We'll get you on the mic here. So in Warrensburg, they're down power lines right now. Firefighters are out. Okay. With that 
I'm making a couple other calls Perfect. as we speak. Perfect. Uh, so we've got that, uh, and we're still wanting to hear from Latham. Latham is Logan County. Uh, Warrensburg is in Macon County. Um, we do have a report of there's a semi overturned at Route 121 near Latham, and uh, there may be some injuries in that area as well, based on some of the initial information that is being shared by the, through the National Weather Service and uh, with uh, some of the sources that are there. So um, may have had a situation in, in Latham and Warrensburg, and uh, hopefully it's not a bad one, but uh, we've got to keep an eye on that closely here. So time now is 8, 5, 8 14. What I want to do, um, Seth is out there. Seth, you're kind of pulled over to the side. Are you ready to talk or are you able to, what, what's going on where you are, Seth? Yeah, Jacob, I'm right by where that grain bin is. Unfortunately, I lost my uh, monitor here in the storm tracker. I know things are still routed in, so I can't exactly see uh, tremendously what you are seeing uh, my feed show you. I'm going to try to get turned around to the point where I can show this grain bin. It's actually on the road here, and it's on the uh, eastbound side of the road, so it's going to be kind of difficult. I'm going to have to try to show it from the westbound side of the road. I'll do the best I can, but uh, bear with me here while I kind of wheel around. Uh, Tyler Repping's here with me. He'll kind of... Uh, maybe be able to uh, spot us a little information on this as well, but I'm going to kind of try to angle myself a little bit to where I can get it with my front camera here. All right. Thanks, Seth. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for you. And if you want to just text me a photo too, I can get that on, on TV pretty quick. Uh, so that's something that we'll, we will, we will watch here. Um, I am getting a couple of reports coming in. The state police report that they have three property crashes on I-72. Uh, and I want to confirm the mile marker numbers they gave us. Uh, um, in Macon County, there's three crashes along I-72 West between mileposts 130 and 139. Um, They're property damage only, but they are obstructing lanes. And uh, so let's see if I can figure out what those numbers are here. They report things in numbers, but you at home and me, myself, I'm like, mile marker number, what's that? Uh, but we can usually get an idea by looking at uh, what's going on there. It looks like that's going to be from the 121 exit between there and Forsyth, and then also all the way up towards Argenta and Oriana, where we've had that happen. Uh, so there have been uh, multiple crashes and uh, multiple reports coming out of Macon County from a, a situation. Also looks like there's some problems near the United Prairie plant north of Forsyth. A uh, bit of a slowdown there from that wind coming on through. Okay, Brandon Morano is back. He's got a microphone. Tell me more about what you've uh, got here. So we just talked to the fire chief in Latham. He said a small tornado came through the town. Multiple trees are down, power poles um, are down as well. Building collapses. He said he's not sure what they have right now. They're trying to get out there and assess all of the damage. But he did say that a small tornado came through Latham and that they are out working right now. And, and we do have a crew also on the way. And he said building collapses, is that? Said bu he building collapses were the words he used. Okay, so we may have a, had a small, but uh, from the radar vantage point, thank you very much for that, yep. Brandon. From what we may have had in Macon County, uh, we may have had a small but strong tornado come through the Latham community and a lot of intense wind damage across northern Macon County and central Pyatt County. And so that's kind of what we've been concerned about. I do have some good news to share here. At this point in Pyatt County, the severe thunderstorm warning has been dropped. We do not think that there has been any, uh, we do not think that there is a continuation of what we call severe wind. That's 58 mile per hour or greater. However, um, what we think is we're still going to have some 45, 55 mile an hour gusts out there. And it might be a little loud based on the setup here um, with those storms. So that's not surprising me. In fact, our news director is in Monticello and she said, hey, the power went out once here. Uh, it seems like it's back on. We've had a lot of folks saying, yeah, the lights are coming on. They're flickering off. And that may continue for Champaign County and into uh, areas along and north of I-74 before all is said and done here. So uh, the report's coming in from Latham. We've had building collapses from a tornado. That's from the fire chief that Brandon Morano got for us. We've had a report uh, that they are dealing with some damage there and still trying to assess things with that. Also seeing some reports in the Diederich area. Uh, there may have been a semi rolled over south of town. So Seth is out in that area and he's also been focused in on some damage. Um, Seth, can, you can we check in with you real quick? Tell us, Seth, uh, where you are and what uh, what, what are we looking at there? So, Jacob, I am about uh, three quarters of a mile to the uh, east of Teutopolis here. This is what appears to be a uh, some sort of livestock feeder, some sort of grain bin. And I'm not exactly sure where the origin of this would be because we are not near really any kind of houses. I shouldn't say not near. We're not immediately close. This isn't something that just tipped over there in someone's yard. This is completely out of place here. This feeder is 
It's just sitting in the ditch here on the eastern part of town. I'll try to wiggle my car around here just a little bit to get you a better view. I'm on the westbound side of the road, so I don't want to blind anybody here coming uh, to the east. We've got a semi-truck coming here real quick, so we're just going to allow him to pass through, and then I'll try to get you a, a better view with my brights here. But like I said, this is not, uh, I don't think, anywhere near its uh, place of origin. This has just been picked up and just rolled out here uh, a little bit uh, farther to the uh for sure because i don't exactly know where the origin is there that lightning kind of lighting it up just a little bit and I, I did send you a picture jacob if you want to uh if you are capable of showing that it's got pretty good uh it, the iphone did a good job of kind of lighting it up there just a little bit but we have got ourselves uh some sort of grain bin or livestock feeder that is uh well displaced from its uh, place of origin all right thanks for that seth uh, i'm going to pull up the um, Apple TV real quick on I Max wanted, One and see if I, I can get that to it. I need information on what no. happened. I mean, do you know where this came from? Because so the, wind, the, the wind came from the west and it just blew like the, the we were at the KC Hall and it was all right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll let Seth uh, kind of take care and get some more information. Let's hold Max One if we can real quick. That's the photo that Seth sent me. Um, wow, that's uh, some sort of grain bin that's there, uh, a feeder bin that's uh, I don't really have, he sounds like he was talking to someone from that area. And so we're sending him out in Effingham County to look at some of the damage from that area. In addition, I am seeing um, some more information. In fact, I'm seeing some video. I don't have the ability to share that with you, but it looks, it's a tornado that came through Latham in uh, Macon County. And we were trying to spot that with our camera, but that certainly is the case. Let's go ahead and bring me back full. I've got another video I need to get on Max uh, One. So if we can bring me back on camera one, that would be good here. Um, I'm going to get this other text up. This is some new video that's coming in from Latham on 121. And uh, so we'll have that Max One ready to go here. Uh, there it is. That's a semi that is blown over on 121 in the Latham area. It looks like the looks like county sheriff is there on scene. Um, from that, uh, we have not heard officially of any um, rep other reports of semis on 121, but we do know that there are property damage crashes on I-72, and that's going to be in the Decatur area up towards Argenta, Oriana, and Cisco, which is a, a concern for us. So again, I'll play that video one more time for you so you can see that. That is from the Decatur area, northwest towards Warrensburg and Latham on 121. Okay, Seth, uh, is Seth got his information? Is he still talking in the back there? Seth, did, I heard you were talking to someone. What, what, what do you have to share with us? Yeah, thanks, Jacob. I got my uh, camera turned around here to hopefully uh, show things a little better. I'm kind of facing the wrong side of the road. I don't want to blind any traffic that might be here, but there's nobody around right now. So I think I'm just going to wiggle the car around just a little bit, if you don't mind watching out here just a little bit, Tyler. Uh, Tyler Repkin told me where this happened at. This is about three quarters of a mile to the east of Teutopolis. We've got some sort of either grain bin or livestock feeder that is completely, I mean, completely displaced from its place of origin. Uh, Tyler's saying the wind's, of course, blowing from the west to the east. Jacob, there is no house immediately next to this thing or farm immediately next to this thing. This was picked up and either carried or just rolled out here. And I, I mean it when I say this is nowhere near any sort of building. So definitely some very strong winds here in uh, in this side of Teutopolis here on the east side. Uh, again, just to be able to, to pick that up and either roll it or, or throw it this far had to be some sort of super impressive wind. So this is the uh, only damage I've seen so far. Looks like the uh, electricity is also off on the east side of Teutopolis as well. West side seemed to be okay. So I uh, kind of just looking around to see what kind of damage there is. But yeah, livestock feeder just picked up and completely either rolled or hurled uh, here about three quarters of a mile to the east of Teutopolis, Jacob. All right. Uh, thanks for that, Seth. Um, you're going to keep this updated down there. Uh, Seth, just so you know, we have also heard of a semi that rolled over south of um, let's see, that's going to be south of Diederich. So that'd be kind of down in your stomping grounds there. Um, and then I'm trying to get, I just got some information as well. Another photo I want to share that I'm going to pull up here in a second on social media. Um, let's we'll see if I can get that. It was from north of Decatur. And I want to make sure it was something that is worth sharing with you as some of those reports are now really starting to roll in from Macon County with damage. And then also with um, the... Okay, so this is from earlier. If we can pull Max 1 up full, and I'll get that camera turned there. This is earlier north of Forsyth. Uh, they're looking back to the north and west there and kind of looking in there. 
something low and suspicious. That may have been the tornado uh, that came through there. You're, those wind turbines, I spot those there. I've seen those a number of times. And uh, so that may have been the actual tornado rotation that's kind of wrapped back up in there. The fire chief in Latham says it was a tornado that came through. They are building collapses and they are responding to folks in that area. And we're getting some information as well that continues to pour on in of uh, some structural damage in that area in Macon County. So kind of watching this uh, as much as we can across central Illinois. I'm going to pull up as well my Decatur Sky Cam, and uh, we'll kind of we got the Charleston one up. I'm going to bring the Decatur one back up and see if we can't see much to the north and west there. Um, lots of photos coming in now, which is good to hear. We appreciate your our viewers who are keeping us informed and updated um, with what they've got. Um, here's another picture on Max One from Warrensburg. Let's see if I can get that there. There it is. Uh, there's a tree down on a, a looks like a house that came on in. So that's another picture that I got there. Um, let me get the Decatur camera up back on Max 2, and then we can look at that. Um, trying to multitask here. And not seeing a whole lot in the Decatur area. So that's uh, what we'll be, be keeping an eye on. So if we can bring Max 2 back up in Decatur, that'd be good. Um, kind of looking around and keeping our eyes on things here. Still some lights on, but we know north of town towards Forsyth and into Maroa took a hard hit. We know Latham took a really hard hit. We know that uh, in particular, um, what was a tornado came through there. And uh, we've seen some signs that that has been an issue for us. Uh, so that's certainly... Uh, what we'll be watching. I want to check back in with our storms now and give you an update on where they are. Storms to the south and west now. Matt Toon, Charleston clear, Cumberland County clear, Effingham County, you're clear. We're keeping an eye on the Clark Edgar County, Southern Edgar County, though uh, concern not that high for me in these areas as the storms just kind of seem more uh, disorganized. There is still a line there. And anytime we see this line like this, that's within a blob of storms, um, what happens is sometimes you can get uh, little spin-ups on that, uh, kind of in this area here. And uh, so the shear is favorable in that spot. That's because it's on the warm front for something to materialize, but uh, it's not immediately concerning. I think there's going to be some 60 mile hour winds regardless coming through that. And so that's something we'll watch. Uh, I do want to keep an eye on our storm coming out uh, through Monticello now. It's approaching areas west of Seymour. I just want to keep an eye on it. Uh, it looks like to me it has been weakening, which is good news. I think it's going to be a noisy storm, though, for Champaign-Urbana. We don't have a warning on it, but the National Weather Service is saying, hey, this storm has had a history of producing significant significant wind damage and uh, so they're watching it so we might get some big thunder boomers in Champaign-Urbana and we'll keep an eye on that wind threat as well and uh, keep keep you cover keep you covered with everything going on so that is what we have it is 8 25 I think what we're going to do is for another five minutes or so uh, I'm going to keep an eye on things um, and I'm just checking all these other photos where make sure um what we've had is uh, uh, perhaps a significant tornado in Macon County earlier tonight and lots of damage in Macon County, even into Western Pyatt County and then down to um, the Effingham County area where there's been issues. Lots of power outages and issues being reported from Sangamon County into Macon and Logan counties with the storms that came on through. Uh, getting some other reports uh, coming in with those power outages across the area. In fact, why don't I give you an outage number? We'll get an update for that. Uh, Dewitt County, 750 customers out. We've got 2,200 customers out in Macon County, 1,900 customers out in Sangamon County, 200 customers that are out in Logan County. Shelby County has 1,700 customers out, 3,000 customers out in Effingham County, and uh, Jasper County has another 1,200 customers out. So far, I have only uh, a few sporadic outages, probably not weather-related, in Champaign County and in um, the Effing in uh, um, the Pyatt County area. Okay. I got a video here. Let me check this video real quick. And this may be something that we want to run with, uh, depending on how it looks. But this is going to be um, the situation that we're dealing with now. We're getting close to wrapping up coverage. For some of you, I know you feel inconvenienced. Um, and uh, I, I apologize for that. But uh, we've had a situation tonight where we've had folks who's uh, had their homes damaged. They have had their uh, personal belongings strewn about by the wind. And so that certainly is something that uh, we are not uh, too, too much uh, care about here. If we can, let's go ahead and just uh, um, keep uh, on me here for a little bit. Um, and I'm going to watch this video, make sure it is. Let's see. Go ahead and if we can pull on 
Max two. This is video from the Warrensburg area that, uh, or Max one. I'm sorry. This is video from the Warrensburg area that may have been that tornado that went through the Latham area. You can kind of see in the distance there. A little hard to tell, but we're starting to get some videos that's confirming what we were seeing on radar, where uh, storms heading towards Macon County really causing some problems for us. Uh, and this is from Warrensburg, looking towards the Latham. So you can kind of see that dark figure. In fact, you've seen a few little flashes there, um, perhaps. Pretty stout little tornado came on through there. Pretty uh, strong tornado, more than likely, that came through the Macon County area. And so that is uh, what we're dealing with. Okay, it is 8.28. At this point, uh, I would like to wrap up coverage on TV. And I'd like to get off here in the next uh, two, three minutes or so. We will continue our coverage on digital platforms. So like 8.32, be a great time to toss back to our regularly scheduled programming. We're going to have updates for you in the newscast at 9 and 10. You can join me for continuing coverage until we can get these storms all the way through. I still think for folks along I-74, a lot of rain, some thunder, even up into Ford, Iroquois County, the severe threat much lower now, but certainly still is um, the, a concern for that. As we look more to the south here into Coles County, still getting some thunder and lightning in Charleston, quite a bit of wind there. It's not a significant threat to me at this point. We're not hearing, uh, seeing widespread straight line winds causing significant damage like earlier. Um, Coles County, we're watching Charleston. Further to the south and east, we're into Clark County and eventually Edgar County. Uh, the tornado threat really has come down a bit for us, which is good news, um, but we still can't have some of that wind and we will watch it. We're gonna move to that digital coverage here. Uh, some of that wind still there, obviously, but uh, with the, the situation that's unfolding, I feel confident that we are probably going to roll through the rest of the night uh, with being able to leave the TV alone until the newscast, but then we'll be able to get uh, some continuing coverage on our digital platform. So in the back, just let me know. Give me a time cue of when we've got uh, coverage to, to wrap up. Okay, they're waiting for me. So time now is 829. I'm Jacob Dickey. We've got uh, Seth in the Storm Tracker. We are going to keep you updated on our digital platforms as we watch these storms roll on through. Only a couple of warnings left for Coles and uh, Clark and Edgar counties here, but uh, or Cumberland County, I should say. But uh, we think we're going to be getting these storms out of here and across the state line. Still going to expect some rain, thunder, wind, perhaps, but nothing as significant as has happened earlier tonight. I'm Jacob Dickey in the studio, bringing you severe weather coverage. We'll have more updates on some of the damage to the area, some of the reports, videos, and more. That'll be on WCIA 3 News at 10 o'clock. We now return to our regularly scheduled program. All right, folks, uh, we're just checking in on our digital platforms here and keeping an eye on things. Um, and uh, monitoring what we've got. There are still some storms down there. They do not look as organized to me. It's still raining. It's still windy down in um, some of the wind gusts and whatnot. But I don't see anything to me that looks as significant as it did earlier. And so that is... Uh, Good news for us here is we're transitioning out of this event, but it seems like we've had uh, quite a bit of damage in the um, Macon County, Sangamon County areas. So that's what we are, are looking at. I'm switching some stuff around here so I can hear things. Um, Seth is somewhere. I don't know where Seth is at. Seth, are you able to hear it all? Or He's there. Okay. Let me get my stuff so I can hear you. Um, I will get you up in a second. Um, and we'll hear from you. And if you can, Seth, I'd like to get you into, um, okay, let me see if I can hear you in a second here. Get some things connected. Can you hear me, Seth? Okay, I can't hear, I cannot hear, I can hear you now. Perfect. Good. So we'll have you in the background. I'll come to you in just a second here. Um, I want to look at some of the storms down there. Uh, still intense coming into Robinson, south of 70, but quickly moving out our area. Seth is down in Effingham and keeping an eye on things. So what I want to do is I'll bring Seth up on program and you guys can hear from him. And Seth, go ahead and keep the, the, the camera shot on you so we can look at you and hear you talking a little bit. Uh, tell us uh, where you are and what you are seeing. All right, thanks, Jacob. I'm still in Teutopolis right now. I'm at a uh, gas station at the uh, four-way stop known as Wessels. It's a, it's a fast stop gas station. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. I've just been kind of sitting here, kind of my, situating myself, kind of seeing uh, reports of where stuff's at. 
that grain bin I showed you there earlier, that kind of livestock bin, I got an update on that. Apparently, it originated from Schmidt's Auction, which is there on the south part of the road, the uh, east-west road going between uh, Montrose and Totopolis. And apparently what happened was it lifted up and actually either was kind of tossed to the air or it rolled about a quarter of a mile down the road from that spot of origin there next to Schmidt's Auction. And apparently it was stuck in the road there for a little bit. And there had to be a handful of guys that actually had to kind of push it over into the ditch. So there was a strong enough wind to kind of uplift that uh, livestock bin or that grave bin over there at Schmidt's Auction and kind of toss it down a, a good quarter of the mile there on the road. So that's what I've seen so far here in Setopolis. I'm going to maybe uh, kind of cut it south there to Diedrich and kind of see if I can see any evidence of that uh, semi rollover you talked about, Jacob. But kind of just situation situating myself right now, kind of letting the reports come to me before I decide to go out there and look at some places because it sounds like there's quite a bit of activity going on here. So I'm just going to kind of uh, keep an eye on things, kind of look around and see where the uh, damage is. But just wanted to update on that kind of uh, livestock bin. And apparently it was able to roll over a good quarter of a mile down the road and actually had to be pushed off the road by uh, four gentlemen who uh, kind of cleared the road there. So uh, in Totopolis, right next to Wessels Gas Station, Seth Bonoff, we'll send it back to you, Jacob. All right, thanks so much there, Seth. Uh, we're going to switch things around, and uh, I'll mute you real quick here, and that way you're clear. Um, that's uh, kind of what we're dealing with here. I want to get some new video that's coming on through, and uh, kind of show that. So that's that's going to be um, some video. So let me get my, my computer up here for a second, and we'll get that uh, pulled up on Max 1 in a minute. So some video coming from the Latham area of some of the damage and give me one second here digital is a little more lax we get time to kind of reset get ready for the newscast so we got that that one i need to do max one full how about this here we go this is some new video coming in from latham showing some trees down in the area um so we're continuing to watch that so you can see some pretty significant tree damage there showing up and then let me show you the other one i think this is on the edge of town but they did have a tornado come through latham which was um bit of a concern with the storm that's wrapped on through. So that's kind of what we've been dealing with and uh, how things have been going. So there you are. There's seen some of that first imagery coming from Macon County. Where we're watching things here. The good news is I think overall is that we are trending downward. I do want to keep an eye on that storm coming into Champaign County. It's doing the right thing. We'll figure out pretty quick here um, what it's going to do. In fact, I'm going to bring up that camera real quick. The... kind of take a peek at that. I've got the studio camera that should pop up. There we can see it. Uh, that's looking towards State Farm Center. I'll bring in the stadium. That's the stadium camera. We should be looking at the studio camera now. It's windy up there. There's a lot of wind energy. That's looking off towards the east, towards the um, towards campus. And I'm going to rotate that back around and turn it to the west. That storm's coming to the northwest side of town. So if you've got any reports about anything, let us know. We would appreciate seeing those and getting some information uh, on that. And um, there's going to be some wind energy. There is. I'm trying to get that turn around. Not happening much. It is not working for me, so we are not able to get that uh, turned around. Let's try the stadium camera. I'm having a little trouble with the studio camera. Um, so we're going to get the stadium camera up, rotate that back. It's going to be windy. Uh, we're going to have some wind come through. I'm not surprised by that. I don't think it's going to cause widespread damage, but certainly you know, we could have a spot or two of trouble with what's going on, kind of peeking there. Now we're able to see a little bit better. Some of those low clouds coming through, the wind picking up. Um, so, so 40, 55 mile an hour gust on the table, and that's going to be noisy. You're going to hear that and uh, certainly feel that before all is said and done. So uh, kind of watching that camera bounce around. That's some strong winds. National Weather Service is continuing to monitor things and uh, writing some of those updates in severe weather from the Latham area. So that's uh, certainly what we're, we're monitoring. Um, of course, uh, this to me, the storm doesn't seem like it's a tornado producer, which is good news that there will be some wind mixing down with it, which is one of the concerns that we have. And that's coming to the west side of Champaign crossing I-57. Um, I don't think it is intense wind, 
but it does uh, it is something that uh, we're going to keep our eye on here for uh, a little bit. The, the wind signatures really come down first, which is some good news here. Uh, but we are continuing to monitor things here on digital platforms. The storm coming to Champagne. Some of you are saying, hey, lights are flickering. Power's uh, been flickering on and off in town. I'm not surprised by that. Um, that can happen. I mean, we get some strong winds like this and trees bouncing around and things of like that. But we are moving in the right direction to get these storms out of here. And uh, that um, is kind of like what... Um, We kind of get that in the springtime with these storms rolling on through. So, kind of taking things a little slow here. We got 2,300 of you on our Facebook platform. If you're watching, let us know where you're watching from. Got any questions? I'm going to flip back over to the radar real quick. Um, kind of keep an eye on things. But uh, our severe threat winding down for the most part, which is good news. There's still going to be some wind energy. You know, you're going to get some wind gusts. It, it's not going to be anything that causes significant problems. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly the, there is some wind. The low pressure is very close by, that center of the low pressure. And so with that, we've got some wind energy that's in place. And so we're going to see some of that wind energy mix on down to the surface. Um, so we're going to kind of watch this storm. I kind of like where we're at. Um, I like where we're sitting with this storm. As far as it moving on through, I think it's going to be noisy. There's going to be some lightning with it still. Um, in fact, I'll loop this over the last three hours. And you can kind of see see how it's swirling right in here. That swirl is one where we had that tornado form that hit Latham. Um, that swirl is the low pressure center. And so that's very close to the area. We're pretty much uh, getting the storm out of here before all is said and done. Okay, I got to do a quick mic switch for some batteries. So let me do that real quick and then I'll check out Clark County. Back on now, hear me? Um, and so we are watching this line move on through in Clark, Edgar counties. There's still some lightning. There's still some wind in there. Uh, the 20 to threat just doesn't seem to be as much of a concern for me. Do I want to rule it out? No. Um, if it's a Clark County issue here, probably looking south of 70 towards Marshall, exiting pretty quickly. Um, there's a few spots in Coles County we got to watch as well, but it's not... Uh, I just don't have as much enthusiasm for these storms as earlier when we did perhaps as these storms were rolling on in. So going to be a lot of lightning. It's still going to be thunder. A lot of you are going to say, man, like that's windy. But uh, we're not seeing wind. It's causing widespread damage and widespread problems and things of that. So that is certainly uh, an issue for um, that we're good. We're grateful for when we got widespread damage. Hey, we've got uh, just some, some strong winds. The low pressure is close by and that is causing uh, some problems for us here. Let me see. I'm getting some some new videos. Kind of looking at them. Things are looking fine. So the I just heard a big boom here next to the station. Looks like a bolt kind of came down close by. There it is. Just popped up. Pretty close. I heard that one even in the studio. Um, so we've got that going on. Storm rolling on through. When you kind of look at the swirl, you can see that low pressure. That low pressure is right west of Decatur, or right east of Decatur now, coming through southern Pike County. So there's going to be a lot of wind energy because of how close we are to the center of low pressure. So that does not surprise me um, with this. As far as wind speeds go, 
currently seeing winds uh, 25 to 35. We had a gust of 48 in Champaign, 40 in Decatur. Let me just check uh, some of the other sources of information. And um, see if we've got any updates on, I'm going to see if they got any hourly or, or five minute observations of the wind. Um, Willard Airport's only reported gusts in the most recent bit up to 23 miles an hour, but the wind has shifted to the north now. So that low pressure is kind of coming on through. It's kind of swirly and, you know, that's, that's, that's what we expect. You can see the pressure has also been, been actually rising now as the low passes on by. So that is uh, what we're watching here. All right, folks, here's what we're going to do. I I'm feeling pretty good about where we're sitting. You can see those temperatures there. That, that warmer, unstable air is on the way out. Um, and uh, so that's some good news for us where um, things are winding down. So with that, I'm going to wind this coverage down and kind of wrap things up for us here. We'll keep an eye on it uh, from behind the scenes. But uh, I feel good about where these storms are heading and how they're decreasing in intensity. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but it uh, seems like we are winding up our coverage here for the night. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. And uh, we will still expect some wind. It's going to be breezy, but there's nothing severe, no tornado threat at this point. Uh, if there was, we 